everybody, and welcome back to the Smite Pro League. Our first set of the day is done, and now we're moving on to our second of three. We're going to have the Olympus Bolts up against the Jade Dragons for that second set out here. My name is J-Mag. With me to talk about this set is going to be Gore Miser over here joining me on the desk. And, and these two teams are, are ones that I think we'll have a lot to discuss about, is specifically their rises up here in Season 9, yeah. coming off of their falls back in Season 8, uh, talking a lot about... Uh, individual player match. I think we'll have a lot to say here with this jungle specifically, too. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun one. This has been a matchup across Smite the last few years, these two teams, because they've roughly stayed the same each time, where it's historically favored the guys behind me, right? It's almost always been the Dragons. I think it was like in Season 7, it was almost exclusively Dragons wins over the Bolts. Then in Season 8, it was mostly Dragons wins, but the Bolts able to get a few key matchups throughout here, so we'll see how in Season 9 if the Bolts are able to can kind of continue that change they made last year. Yeah, we can see how, how the Bolts are standing up here to the new Dragons. Now they have a new mid laner in there with Pagon on the side of there. Let's look, take a look, though, at the schedule. See what's gone on so far these last couple of days and what's still to come. Obviously, we are first set done. The Tartarus Titans took a 2-0 over the Solar Scarabs. Now we'll have the Bolts and the Dragons. And then to close out our day... Oni Warriors up against the Camelot Kings. Should be a fun one there with the loss to the Camelot Kings yesterday to the Tartarus Titans. The Oni Warriors have had their mixed success so far. That, that set will be one that we'll be keeping close eyes on here. But uh, this one with the Olympus Bolts and the Dragons, I think you're right to highlight how close the two teams have been over the last couple of years, at least standings-wise. Games have been more often, as you said, gone more towards the J Dragons. And with the new mid laner, with how explosive Pagon has come up into this mid lane, this should be a really interesting matchup with him up against the veteran Venenu. Yeah, this is going to be really fun to watch, I think, in every aspect of it, right? This duo, again, the duo lanes matched up against each other quite a few times, but the mid lane, it's going to be a new experience. Vin's been playing so long that I don't think there's a lot of gods you can play against him that he's not going to be prepared for. But there is something to be said about the fact that Pagon has continually changed up the god pool, I mean, to the point where it has almost been a different god every single game, I think only going back to a few of them uh, consistently. So there's a wild card, I think, that's going to be coming out of the mid lane. The Bolts, though, are on a, a kind of different run right now. I mean, they've 2 0 both of their last opponents, and, and at least, if I'm remembering correctly, at least for like the Leviathans last week, like that's very surprising. They over the Valks earlier this week, it was a very, very dominating performance for them as well. So if they're continuing a route like that, uh, the Dragons are going to give them some trouble, but they've kind of been on fire. <laughs> yeah, the Dragons have, have also been pretty nutty over here. And we'll talk about the jungler a little bit here in Sam, yeah. because Sam has also been kind of changing up his god pool a little bit this season. We talk about how much Pagon has kind of flexed out here. Sam has been doing a lot of the same thing. Sure, he's been going back to some of his signature picks like this Mercury. We've been seeing the gods like Havwa come out. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing uh, you know a, a lot of change-ups here into the jungle specifically. And, and one of the things that was often talked about with the Dragons last year was if they go down early, typically you can probably expect mid, late games to not be as hot here. But that's been changing a lot here with the Dragons. And through Sam and through this mid lane here, these two players in particular have really been able to keep the Dragons kind of momentum going, even if they are down early. Yeah, I think Sam's actually been having a much better year all around so far than, than the start of Season 8. I think Season 8, it was really weird. There was a lot of, like just different balancing points. Uh, I think that ended up kind of disrupting a lot of the dragons. Sometimes you'd come in and you'd get a Sam that was just going to hyper carry. And then sometimes you'd come in and you'd get a Sam that what didn't seem to be there for the entire game. Like he, he was a number on the board and ended up being maybe a kill count. I think it was like yesterday <laughs> he ended up playing the Emir and the, maybe not the, the most impactful, at least slash line that he would have liked. Granted his freezes and like presence, uh, I think was still, very important for his team. I don't know that we're going to get the Ymir jungle. I also have to give him shout outs because he is the last like reigning triple double in the SBL. And that's mm. just fun. Is there anything in our fantasy league that gives bonus points to anybody who gets a triple double? There should be. That's what uh, I'm saying. Because I they're, they're, Almost more at this point, actually, they are more rare than <laughs> pentakills. I think I think that would be really <laughs> impressive out there if we can. Maybe we talk to him, see if we can get like like five bonus points if we get a triple double out here, anyways. But lining up against Sam is going to be last on the opposite side for the Bolts, and, and, and this is a player that we've also talked a lot about. With yeah, he seems to be more so the success, not really the failings, but when Lasbra is hot in the jungle, the yeah. Bolts look nigh unstoppable. When Lasbra is not able to get off that tear, it's a little bit of a slower game out there. But so far this season, Lasbra's really been stepping up in that jungle. A lot of these setup-oriented gods have worked yeah. well for him, but when he gets on these more 
hyper style assassins, these dodgies, the hubwas, things like that. He's really been on fire. I think that, you know, both of these junglers, it's really weird, had a very similar arc last year where it was very hot and cold. It kind of felt like, and you know, you look at it maybe grand screen, like the meta just didn't quite suit their play style as much as it did others, right? It, it felt like it maybe kind of fell last year, maybe, in, uh, you know, more setup. Sometimes there were kills and things like that, but like, you weren't the guy that, that could come in and do what we've seen so far in Season 9. I think that they're a lot more impactful so far this year. And because of that, it's benefited both Sam and Lasber, right? Their, their picks all of a sudden are both a little bit more prominent. What they're really good at is making a highlight play and highlight reels, and they get to be a lot more active in the game and have that impact. So it's been really fun to watch the, the way that they've transitioned here into Season 9. And the fact that both of them are making a much larger impact on the team every single game, it's making things very interesting. Because, like, you look at this matchup and you know Haddix and fine okay that's going to be a huge one Pagan and Venenu that's going to be a huge one both of these lanes are going to be affected heavily by the jungles early on and so whether or not Lazbra and Sam are going to be able to get their hands into the the matchup a little bit stronger that's going to be what could potentially determine the entire game in, in the first few minutes. Yeah, and Lazarus is still one of the few players out there who are also doing these level two ganks over in those sidelines. And we're going to talk to Laz for a little bit, maybe kind of get his thoughts on this set, some of his performance throughout here. I've got him standing by for our pregame interview. Laz, thanks for standing by with me. Uh, how do you feel about the success of the team so far? You guys have been on a pretty good little win streak going on here. Uh, how are you guys feeling on, on your upcomings from last season until now? Yeah, I feel pretty good, and it's been a pretty good start to the season here, and uh, it's going to be an exciting game here into Jade. Um, it's usually pretty close games into them. Yeah, I mean, this has been kind of a historic matchup throughout the league between uh, the two of y'all's teams. Oftentimes, your your team comes out on the lower end, but you guys have been on a bit of a hot hand here. How do you feel about going up against Sam for soccer specifically? Uh, I feel pretty good. I think I know what uh, guard he's going to play, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to pick some good guards into what he's picking, and then uh, hopefully we get some good early games and just roll with it. How do you think it kind of changes up? You know, it, it was Hurry winning Sam last time in the mid lane, you know, for the Dragons last year. And now they got Pagan in there, there. Does that really change up that dynamic in that 2v2 for, for you and Ven? Yeah, I would say Hurry win is more like um, like a traditional mage player where Pagan is like a hyper carry, playing hyper carry guards and really getting aggressive with it. And I think that kind of fits the play style of uh, Dragons a lot. So I think it's, it's going to be a, um, a good combination of Sam and uh, Pagan getting that uh, aggressive place going. All right, well, I'll let you get back with the team. Best of luck in your set. Thanks for coming by for the interview. <laughs> Bit of a change. On there. I, love the, I love the thumbs up. Also got the slides on, too. We've been seeing a lot of – we had Bear in here yesterday who had no socks on at all, and now we got the slides out here. We've been seeing – I've been seeing a rise of the Crocs coming back, too. I said it on Twitter. Barefoot Barra is a world champ, all right? That, like, <laughs> it is different. If he's wearing his shoes, his gameplay is just statistically going to be worse. So if the shoes aren't on for Barra, he's doing a good job. We need to find the statistic on on the slides, barefoot Crocs, and, and we'll then keep like, track of like, who's been wearing we, what. We need to keep keep that as an extra Dude, little whatever bonus it was. Note. Like Shinto's shoe game last year, that was like that's where you wanted to be. He was had like the wasn't it like the M and M shoes that he had, like the M and M sliders. <laughs> <laughs> those, were, those are always so good. And then he and then he had like the hot dog shorts or something like that. That you never know what some of the players are gonna find. It was, out the, here. It was the good combo. It won. It, hey, look, it they were winning. winning. They it, got a world championship. You know what? <laughs> you I can't argue with that. <laughs> that is a winning combo out here. Both these teams need to find a winning formula up against each other. I mean, the, the, the Jade Dragons have been finding some very strong early game success in their, in their matchup. Same thing with the Bolts. I mean, we've been seeing Lasbra more often than any of the other junglers in the league right now has been making these early rotations to dual lane, been trying to get yeah. that lane ahead, make sure that Barra and, and Jake are able to have a successful time over there. Uh, whereas the opposite side, Sam has been kind of going more towards this farm oriented early game. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of fills in, again, like back to, to the way they play. And I think the, the gods that specifically like Sam will pick up, you had highlighted like the Mercury. I think of like the Hunbats every now and then with Sam, things that, that, that we've seen him go to a little more regularly, no matter the meta. And those are things that, you're not really going to be fighting that much early on. And if you are, you're maybe not going to be there for, for your damage, right? You're just the setup guy. And so I think that having a, a delay at the, the earliest is going to be good for them. And that's the thing that makes this matchup so interesting to me is just like as teams, we've had these two have 20 minute brawls where the dragons or the bolts just come in and just eviscerate the other team. And then we've had both of these teams go 60 minutes into a game and everything is careful and nuanced and bouncing back and forth and dead even for 55 minutes of it until some team finally gets a fire giant that puts them ahead. And so you, you really are in this world where if they can get a small lead, either of these teams can, can turn it into and cultivate it into something massive. 
but they're both so adept at playing against each other that outside of the, the new factor that's Pagon, they know how to handle what the other team's going to do. They know what to expect out of them with the lead. With Pagon into the fray, I think that throws a, maybe a little wrench in the plans. The Bolts have been able to watch him for a couple of weeks, so they understand it. But he likes to play aggressive, and he likes to play gods that aren't necessarily seen in mid lane. So I'm interested to see how Vin and Lazbro will handle that 2v2. And that kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with what Lazbro was saying in the pregame interviews. We kind of know what Pagon likes to play now, now that we've seen, had some time, and we kind of know what we want to do up against this team. And so far in picks and bans here for game number one, the Bolts have answered just that question. You know, what has been making the Dragons so successful in their first few sets of play this year so far? It's been the Ool, and it's been this Habwa. Those have been very, two consistent picks across the board. Whether that Habwa goes to Pagon or to Sam, whether this Ooler goes to Panda Cat or goes to Pagon, they've been able to find some very strong wins off of that. And then you just throw the Gilgamesh into the mix on it there. Bolts have been doing a lot of homework against this team, and I like these three yeah. bands first. It's, uh, it was interesting to me. Again, I didn't get to watch as much of last week, so when I scrolled over to look at specifically what the Dragons had and saw that King Arthur was their most picked god, I, w I had, like, war flashbacks <laughs> to the beginning of Season 8. I was just like, I don't know what I missed, but something went wrong. But then, it, you know, it was very much in the same vein. Like, he had a 75% win rate for them last week across the four games. The Habwa was 66. They, they liked playing the Medusa a lot, and that ended up winning them quite a few games, so I wouldn't be surprised to to see them go towards that but knowing that, that you know they have a few of these picks that are going to be like so outrageously away from what everyone else is really locking in and trying to play often that they're not only playing but they're playing it well and winning with that makes it a lot more difficult of a team like even with great bands and i think they start this with great bands you only get three of them and so something that the dragons can play and play really well is going to be available the Dragons, they made sure to take Erlong, Kleena, and Daji away. Three gods that would very easily go into the hands of Lazbra there. So the Dragons, a little bit worried about the jungle on the side of the Olympus Bolts at the, very mo at the very least. And, I mean, that's part of why we really highlighted that matchup. These two junglers really can become power players for this team to set these guys up. Although I will say the man on your screen right here, Haddix, has been one of the key components of the Olympus Bolts, one of the most consistent players across the board. If you're keeping giant the Fantasy League, he's also been one of the highest revenge. scoring players throughout the league out there. But as far as first bet picks are concerned, honestly, I'm going to say it, it's a little weird seeing Yamoja as a first pick for the yeah. Bolts because of how much that Jake has been playing the E set, the Nox, Horus, things like that. It, it's almost kind of kind of whiplash seeing the Yamoja just come back here as a first pick. It is nice to, to see it kind of reemerge because like you said, they've only played it, they've played it literally once this year. They won with it when they played it and I, it's still a good god for them. I think there was a, a certain conversation a while ago where when Yamoja had like first release, Jake was not necessarily looking too hot with it, things like that. The Nox you had highlighted, but it's been treating them well. Three games played on her this year, three wins with her every time they lock it in. So you're kind of going out on a wing, but you have to remember that it's it, you know, partially like a little bit there for Jake. I would say majority there to not let PBM have it because PBM is very <laughs> sure. good at this. Luckily for them, you know, you look at this. I'm actually, I was also thinking about the 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 Cirquet because we were talking a lot about the junglers, which was a very, very, very strong pick. I think it was like a 80% win rate for the Bolts or something around those numbers. Like very, very massive control numbers for them throughout last year. The Umoja is in the same vein, right? It was like a 90% win rate for the Bolts throughout last year. So I think that this is a good start for them. Not only is it a pick that treats them really well, but it's a pick that you also get to strip away and empowers the rest of the team. It'll be Kamazot's Cthulhu to go alongside this Yamoja. So we got the front line ready now for the Olympus Bolts. Meanwhile, Jade Dragons have gone with their two backliners, Thoth and Medusa. Pagon has really been seeing a lot of success on this Thoth pick. The Medusa, as you highlighted, has been a go-to really for, for this team specifically. Jade Dragons have really been go prioritizing grabbing this god here. But Medusa is also one of those gods I, I, I like to talk about being kind of that default second pick almost. It's not often we see her be the first pick for any team out here. More often than not, it is kind of waiting until the second part. Interesting enough, though, Ardeo uh, being hovered here by the Dragons. First set of the day, and, and for the last couple of sets of play that we've seen, Ardeo has not really seen any priority at all no bans no picks it, it it almost seems like she's not necessarily fallen to the wayside but has kind of been overshadowed more so by this cthulhu pick yeah and honestly it, it falls into this weird area she did get hit with you know, like you said like a few nerfs things that they kind of have controlled her a little more but she still brings a lot to the table, right? Like, she's still got healing and CC, ranged CC. She's tanky. She can dive teams really well. Like, Ardeo does really well. 
And it's just, okay, what teams are going to play her? And a lot of that has been falling back on the people who were, were just rocking her throughout all of last year. Fine, okay, I think is, is going to be able to put on kind of a master class here for RDO and showcase why she's still solid. But up against the Cthulhu, this is feeling like outside of maybe like some, some level five and before kills, probably going to be slow until the late game. Yeah. First bands coming out in the second phase, Chiron and Nemesis going to be banned here by the Bolts. So a shot over at the jungle for the Bolts players. Meanwhile, the Dragons are going to kind of divert their and kind of divide uh, their bands here, going for kind of a, a Hunter and then a Mage Hunter in that instance there. Geb, though, will be the next band up against the Jade Dragons here. And that's always interesting. You know, we saw the the, the Geb kind of be as a priority band when you're grabbing things like the E-Set or the Nox specifically. It's kind of that, that hard counter matchup here. But other than that, I mean, it, it seems mostly against the J Dragons that this is just a common band. Yeah, and honestly, it's it's mainly because they play, again, they can play anything and they can play it really well. I'm actually really excited because, like, the Nemesis, I think, has been treating both of these junglers well, but really good against the Cthulhu. The Geb, there's a lot of CC that's on the side of the Bolts. Maybe not a, as much hard CC, you know, Yemoja stun and then the Cthulhu knock up. So maybe not the best applicators for like the Geb shield immediately. But to me, this indicates that it's going to be one, a safety factor. It helps keep Medusa and Thoth a lot safer. And this draft is so far really good at sticking to those two picks. And so it alleviates some of the safety they would have. And maybe that they're going to end up picking something in that they just don't <laughs> want to deal with Geb on the other side. Never know what the bolts are going to grab out here. Never know what the dragons are going to do either. It's an Osiris pick on the side of Jade Dragons. Osiris was a very meta jungler kind of yeah. in the mid to late part of Season 8. We then saw him kind of flex his way over into the solo lane a few times here. But with the RDO locked in, this Osiris more than likely now slating Lightning itself bolt. over in towards the jungle. And now on the side of the Olympus bolts, they'll lock in Merlin for that mid lane. Make sure it gives Venenu something somewhat safe over there, but also just something that can provide a lot of damage, and then couple that with a Cernanos. So now we get to see a look at the backliners here. Merlin, Cernanos, a very common second hunter here. He and, up. Yeah, Merlin, I think, is just something that's classic for Vin, and I expect to see a lot of good plays come out of it. It's, it's good damage, good burn, and when it comes down to play, Vin and, and this pick have gone hand-in-hand. Hand. There was a, a series, like, whenever Merlin was meta, there were just, like, three or four mid laners where it was, like, the perfect pick for them. Vin, I think, can qualify themselves along one of those mid laners. That just fits the pick so well. The Cernanos is a fun one because not only has he been seeing a little more rise in play, he's just got a good matchup up against Medusa, right? So he should be able to give Barra a small edge over there. I think a lot of it is going to depend on, on some of the supports at this point, right? You've got a Yamoja beside you and your Karnanos. Not necessarily like the best and the greatest clear that you're going to have, especially because Medusa already starts off with pretty solid clear. And when you add in a Kepri... It adds just enough, I think, that, you know, early, like, first level, two levels, maybe, the Bolts aren't going to be able to find the exact amount of pressure they want. But I think early on, this is going to be a very high potential fight zone for both of these teams. Yeah, first couple of weeks of this Kepri, we saw a lot of bans pretty much just across the board. Kepri was being banned. He's been let out just a little bit more. And so far with the nine games that he's been able to make it through, has found success in six of those ones here. And, and, and PBM, no strangers to this guy up here. So now... We kind of can solidify that this Osiris is going to be going over to the jungle, RDO solo lane, and then the Medusa Thoth, exactly where you'd expect it here. So this might be the more one of the most normal drafts, and that's a weird way to say it. This <laughs> might be the most standard style of draft that we have seen out of the Jade Dragons in quite some time, Gore. Yeah, and honestly, I'm okay with it, right? I think it, it's one that feels, honestly, it feels very, uh, well... Ignore the Thoth and Medusa feels very Season 8. I guess <laughs> saying, hey, re remove 40% of the team to make my point probably doesn't sound <laughs> as good as I would like it to. I think a lot it's of it is just like standard frontline, right? Like, you know, you know what Ardeo is going to bring. You know what Kepri is going to bring. And you know what o Osiris is going to bring. You've got a little bit of dive. You've got good CC, good control, and a six man on the field because of the Scarab's blessing. So you've got a very standard team fight coming out of, of the core that's going to be pushing forward the most. You've got good damage and a great hunter and what we've seen out of Medusa. A lot more easy, like, anti-heal application. So that's going to help up against specifically the, the Yamoja over there. But you've got good damage. We just saw what like a lacerate viper shot combo can do in game number one of the last set and thoth is just artillery i mean he's a literal cannon from very far away and so it's going to be a lot of good damage easy clear for them early on like you said very standard and it's kind of surprising to see it like they could absolutely do something incredibly wonky and send everyone off roll or whatever but like for the most part top to bottom it feels 
almost bland compared to what we're used to from them. <laughs> yeah, it just works. It's a good comp. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're so accustomed to the spice that's been coming out of the Dragons, you know, especially when they had, like, their matchup against the Valkyries. We're like, man, this is where these guys should go. And then it was complete opposite of what we thought out here. But going up against the Bolts here, yeah. especially this Cthulhu, uh, before we jump in a game, kind of get your thoughts. Do you think that the Dragons have dropped something to deal with Haddox's Cthulhu? Because the last two games that he's played it, He's gone seven one and seventeen as a combo. Yeah, so that's that's good one, but also I don't know if I would give them a, a lot to deal with this. I mean, like Kepri Res maybe like to, to help deal with it, but like Thoth, you know, you've got your dash to get away. Medusa, you've got your dash to get away. Cthulhu's just gonna ult and run you down. They don't have anything that to me screams like kill the Cthulhu really hard. It more seems like this Kepri was locked in of whoever their isolated target is, whoever they want to kill, I'm going to res them and try to live through the engagement as opposed to counter the engagement. Well, it's game number one between the Olympus Bolts and the Jade Dragons. Who's gonna come out on top in the first one? We've got Dave and Trelly to help answer that question. Trelly, I, I couldn't tell you. I think of all four outcomes of this set, all four are on the table. I could see a 2-0 Dragons, I could see a 2-0 Bolts, and I could see a 2-1 going either way. It really depends on which team shows up. We, we've seen good and bad from the Bolts. We've seen good and bad from the Dragons. I think game one will tell us a whole lot. Dolson, Traley, and Rosie will be bringing you the Bolts and the Dragons, the meat and cheese of our sandwich of SPL matchups here today, Traley. And I want to start over in the mid lane, but from a different angle. Of course, we know what Pagan's got on this Thoth. You can sit way back. Well, hold on before we get into uh, the action here in game number one. Some of the uh, what, what the desk brought up, though, Trelly, and, and thinking about, of course, the range that Thoth has, and they sort of touched on it at the end of the death segment there, and it's dealing with Haddox's Cthulhu, yep. and also dealing with the Kamazot's dive, because that's just onslaught there. I mean, that's a descent into madness and a bat out of hell straight to the back line. Yeah, usually when I'm looking at the Thoth pick, I think right away, what jungler are you going into? Can you self-peel? Do you need your team to help you out? And when I look at Kamazot, the option is pretty much no. Bad out of hell, you can't damage him at all. You can't charge up the final judgment when he's in right. the air like that. So you pretty much just have to say, I'm going to eat the brunt of this damage, or I'm going to try to stay away from Kamazot. If Laspra is getting real active and just go going to Pagan off cooldown, it's going to be hard for the stock to exist in that mid lane. And that's so important for the Bolts, isn't it, where, where we talk about the early game and why the Bolts have looked so good recently. It feels like it's when Laspra is able to get active oh, yeah. early in, in the games where... I mean, Sam's got a warrior in the jungle this game, but it feels like in games where, where Lazarus is able to get those early game assassins online. Mm -hmm. no, notice the bans even from the dragons. Yeah. Erlang Shen gets taken away. The Kledna gets taken away. Daji taken away. Those types of picks for Laz look so good. Do you think on a Kamazots he can get active early? Oh, absolutely. Kamazots has very solid early pressure as well as being yeah. extremely safe into an Osiris jungle. Sam for Soccer absolutely. is going to try to match that pressure, but the 1v1 potential on both of them I think is going to be pretty solid. I think both right. of them are probably looking at that solo lane, trying to get their solo lane ahead. Haddox and Fine, okay, both have that carry potential. We've seen Haddox's that. Cthulhu with a lead. It's very scary, and I think the Jade Dragons, no stranger to seeing that, that Cthulhu, so they probably want to make sure to shut that down or at least keep it by the wayside for a little bit. These teams are actually kind of similar. When, when you look across the aisle from one another, we've seen similar styles of play from these two teams, similar results mm -hmm. in a lot of their games as well. Uh, and so on the flip side of the jungle from, from Lasbra, I think Sam for soccer becomes a pretty interesting topic of conversation because it feels like Sam at times has played these really aggressive in-your-face assassiny style picks, of course, this year. But I've also seen a lot of facilitator style picks. Plenty of Gilgamesh out of Sam for soccer. Now we get an Osiris. What do we think of Osiris jungle and expectations for Sam? Yeah, Osiris, I'm thinking, is early pressure. And then you're going to build auto attack late game and try to be a pseudo ADC with your shredded composition. You can always go the Berserkers and the Shoguns, so you'll have a little right. bit of tank stats, but still have that auto attack damage. And Osiris just hits like a truck early, man. You're not going to want to find an Osiris at level 5. No one really wants to 1v1 that. And Sam for soccer positioning is always going to be key. He's always going to be in the right moment at the right time. It just depends. You just have to look at Lazaro. Where are these junglers at right now? And are sure. they are they stuffing each other? Are they on left side, right side? Where are you getting your pressure? That sort of thing. Oh, I appreciate everyone's patience. We'll be into game one here shortly. Do not worry. The J Dragons and the Olympus Bolts will be kicking off uh, very quickly here. And so why don't we just complete the entire map here, Trill? We've talked a little bit about the solo lane matchup. Over in the duo lane, I think that's maybe where you start to see some differences in play styles between you know some of the, the, the players in this game. Obviously, Bear and Panda Cat have matched up against one another plenty of times. But Awesome Jake is always the dynamic player. <laughs> over in the duo lane, even play style-wise up against Polar Bear Mike, so unique as we do get back into game number one. 
and, and how different these two picks could look between a Yamoja and a Kepri in lane. Yeah, I think the Yamoja is going to have a little bit more pressure here, especially up bear with the Cernanos. It's just, you're up against the Medusas. So you always have to be careful, and they have one for the start here where both ADCs are going to hit level two. So I th it makes sense that PBM is staying as far back as he is right now. He knows how much pressure they can have right when this wave gets cleared. You're going to have level two, and then the engage can occur. So I think probably just wanting to back off, not really engage just yet on this pick. Laz hovering behind mid lane here. Pagan receiving a little bit of pressure from the Kamazots early, but will dash away just fine. Uh, as a difference in jungle mindset, you got Sanford Soccer hovering with Final K over in solo. As Haddix is on his own and Lazbra is going to rotate on over towards mid lane. Awesome, Jake. You know, and that's, all, you know, that's a mistake I do sometimes make when I talk about Kepri in lane, you know, a little bit more defensive. Hard to match the setup potential of a Yamoja in lane, of course. But when you look at a Kepri trail, especially when, when Mike is playing it, uh, one of the best supports we've ever seen, um, you always have to be aware. You know, a, a, a route into an abduct is actually a, a sneaky amount of setup in what otherwise you might consider to be a, a relatively safe support pick. Yeah, I mean, the, the Kepri, as you mentioned, does want to sit back, but there is always that potential of just a well-timed abduct into some Medusa damage. We know how much Viper Shot does at this point in the game. Right. We know how much Lacerade does. You always have to watch out for both of these supports right now. It really just depends on where you're finding your stuns, where you're finding your CC. Can you set up for these ADCs? But it seems like I think the, the J-Dragons are smart to recognize just how much you can displace with Yamoja. I mean, the bubbles, the stuns, the riptides just ticked over to level three, so could have all three of those abilities available. You're going to have to play very safe in this lane. They're smart to not want to push too far out of that tower. Yep, awesome, Jake. We'll drop an extra point in the one. A uh, little extra damage there. Helps out in lane a little bit further. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you look at the lanes and, and the way they are right now, you imagine things a little bit slower in the lanes themselves. And so your eyes have to turn towards the junglers as a small invade from the J-Dragons will steal a camp away from Lazbra and apparently a blue buff away from Haddix. And, and this is Telegraph. This is something Lazbra sees coming and he's just not worried about it. Blue buff goes over to the J-Dragons. As Lazbra continues to put a little bit of emphasis on the mid lane here, just helping out Ven in lane. Awesome Jake looks towards the purple buff. It's a good stun on the PBM and a body block out from Awesome Jake. The shell from Mike gets used and something out of nothing. The Olympus bolts walk at Polar Bear Mike and Awesome Jake does everything there. Now Lazbro with an opening, but Panda Cat at half HP will slither away. Yeah, that was a beautiful, not only the cripple by the Bramble Bass of Barracuda, canceling out that dash perfectly to get the two autos. One of the most satisfying abilities in the game, I think, on Cernodos. Just a dash, auto cancel dash. Yep. Really make sure to get your full DPS off. And even through the shell, Mike was not allowed to live there. Just trying to defend that purple buff. I mean, you've already mentioned the fact that San for Soccer is in right lane. So Haddix is getting pressure on his blue buff. You have to look for pressure elsewhere. I think they're right to try to fight in duo lane because of that. And not only are they able to steal that one, actually Panic Cat did get the buff, but they get the kill. I think that's a little bit better. It's been a day of caster's curses already. Myth had a pretty bad one and set one against the Solar Scarabs. Just a second ago, I'm saying, yeah, maybe the lanes are a little bit more quiet until the jungles get involved. And at the, send, at the end of that same sentence, uh, a, a two or two versus two kill over on the left side of the map. So Olympus bolts off to a good start, and it's not Lazbra who has to get things going, though. Bat out of hell now reached, as well as Lord of the Afterlife over on the other side for Sanford Soccer. So Laz hasn't gone back just yet, but you imagine once this Kamazots goes back, spends up some gold, you might see uh, an opening to get a little bit more aggressive here in the next couple of minutes. Fully finishes up a Jotun's. Nice power spike is awesome. Jake has been taken low by Panda Cat. Ultimate out from Barracuda. But Panda Cat has used a beat to Barracuda does it again. It's a dash in with the auto cancels. Mike is low here. Has to be careful. A stun from Jake maybe sets up another. And Barracuda playing possessed in the first four and a half minutes. Yeah, that was sick. I, I honestly thought that Jake was over committing a bit there, but now we're seeing the invade over here. Lasper's going to jump in. They're going to try to fight this. Lasper just has enough damage. That's Lord of the Afterlife out from Sanford Soccer. Blink in from Laz, who misses the initial burst of damage, but the second is good, and Haddix guns him down all over the map now, everywhere but mid. The Olympus Bolts rolling over the Jade Dragons in the first five or so minutes of this game. It's really just the mid laners who have been able to sit back and farm up, but jungle pressure and dual lane pressure 
on one side of the map or the other have all benefited the bolts. Yeah, I mean, it, no one's going to want to fight Barracuda right now. Once he finishes that Crusher, especially level 7 on this turn, looking over at Haddix, 1-0, also level 7. I mean, just, again, I thought Jake overcommitted there. He was he was poked out. He finds the beautiful River's Rebuke, but then Baradus has so much damage, is able to pick up that kill. Then immediately over to the right, a blue buff invade turns into, hey, this Kamazot actually has some damage, and of course, Cthulhu is able to pick that kill up with the Descendant of Madness. Has so much range there, so a yep. little overextending there and as well as the fact that Haddix has this teleport so even though not being able to get those early blue buffs the mana sustain didn't hurt too much he was able to stay in lane make sure to keep farmed and now a full void stone picked up full void stone and you know if there's a small level discrepancy anything like that out of those blue buff invades all slowed down it's an abduct from Mike onto Jake but Actually, might have been an opening there, but, but Panacat's smart, I think, without fully realizing where the bolts are. You kind of have to back away from a moment like that. Now, awesome Jake rotates in towards mid. This is a two versus three for now, but then the fully completed Kronos Pendant was going to rotate into the back of that fight. We haven't talked about Merlin that much just yet. Uh, a whopping 72 player damage uh, being like... 5 x by Pagon, who's at 435 player damage. The mid lane has been an absolute brawl in the first six and a half minutes. Yeah, Merlin just <laughs> doesn't really want to get active nope. early, especially into a Thoth. I mean, Pagon is always going to, despite Merlin having some great range, still can't really match Thoth. I mean, Pagon yeah. is going to make sure to poke Ven out anytime they really do want to step up. So I think Ven's smart to say, hey, I'm going to clear the wave more often than not. Maybe I'll hit you with a few ticks of my abilities, but trying to just get online where Merlin comes online about three levels in, whereas Thoth is pretty much doing as insane damage as he will late the game right now. I mean, the flat pen just meshes so well with this kit, given that passive. Yeah, and I, I still expect big things from Merlin later on in this game, especially for Venenu. Feels like it, this has always been a, a fallback pick for Ven. You know, if, if the mid lane draft doesn't necessarily land Ven, one of those top tier picks that he wants, or, or maybe the draft doesn't facilitate a real specific pick, Merlin has, has felt like a catch-all for Venenu over the last few years, and it's always something you have a baseline level of respect for later on in the game and, and a storied career on this pick for sure. Chronos Pendant plus Sands of Time will help him in the CDR department. 30% to start off here in this game. Maybe Trelly need a little uh, little flat pen after that, after you've gotten your CDR all taken care of. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we did see the Divine Ruin, just for putting yeah, a little good. bit of respect on the, the healing as well as the, the life steal that will be built by the Jade Dragons. But looking at the matchup again, I don't think that Merlin really wants to get active just yet. I mean, you, you really do want a few items as we're looking at a lot of damage yeah. going the way of Lasper. Has to use the bat out of hell, and that's Osiris' strong point right now. Has the stone cutting sword finished, trying to find these 1v1s as Pagon dashes in. That's a good flicker from Ven. We'll find a chunk of damage onto Pagon. Awesome Jake around the side, realizing that dash is down, but Polar Bear Mike playing bodyguard will keep Awesome Jake at bay. So the supports have finally rotated out of duo lane. You'd expect that Barrow would have the advantage in this lane just by the way the early game has gone. Two kills for Barra, one death finding both Mike and Pandacat respectively. But it's actually Pandacat show he's got a slight lead here in this lane and Panicat not one to, to shy away from taking some individual brawls if he finds an opening. Yeah, it's honestly crazy because Barra does have two kills, just a slight XP difference, I think, in the way yeah, of the Medusa. Big. But Panicat, you're right, is not afraid to take these 1v1 engagements if they present themselves. I mean, you just have to watch out for the ward game. Where is the junglers on the map right now? And that's when these ADCs will know, can I look to get aggressive here? Can I try to force something out, go for the, the Harpy invades or even the purple right. buff, something like that? Right now, though, Panda being very smart. We haven't really Whoa. seen him, but Ven's getting very weak. Ven abducted back, but the final judgment isn't enough. Luckily, Sam for Soccer is in range, and that'll give the Jade Dragons their first kill of the game. Pagon waits just a minute and sends some damage Venenu's way. Shell nearly enough from Austin Jake as well as healing. Uh, but I'm not sure there's much more Ven can do there. Dodges out a lot of the initial burst and the initial CC. Uh, but when Sam for Soccer rotates in, that one's a done deal. Yeah, even a great abduct by Mike to make sure that the final judgment hits. Even though beads were expended, you're right. Ben had the juke shoes as much as he could. It was just a little bit too much damage there. And this is still not that point of the game where Merlin can really, you know, defend against these tanks. He will have a crazy amount of burn late game. But right now, Sword just has to hope that his team is there to help him. And unfortunately, not enough peel from the Yemoja here as we're looking back at that mid lane fight. Lasbro's gonna get that greater Scorpion, buff up his buff camps for the next spawn, and that's gonna help out the team a wee bit. And we're just seeing the, the gold lead still in favor of the J-Dragon, despite it being a 3-1.
Yeah, actually, a decent little chunk in favor of the J Dragons as well. Now, what we did see early was Lazbra being active, but has slowed down since then. It's been a lot of reactionary plays, especially over in the mid lane from Laz. Bat out of hell used defensively a couple of times. Now, that's not a death sentence for the Olympus Bolts, but the, the way we've seen them win, as you and I have already talked about, is when Lazbra consistently stays busy early in the game. And so, you know, over the next few minutes, especially with Blink, especially with Bat Out of Hell, now you've got Jotun's and Brawler's Beat Stick. Uh, at least on the map right now, before Sam for Soccer goes back, and he will. There was a full item advantage for Lazbra. Lazbra hovering over on left here, I'm calling his name. Uh, maybe see him step up to the plate. Won't be, though, for the time being. Itemization is evened out on the left side of the map as well. Again, despite uh, being even in XP and a couple of kills for Barracuda, you might expect a slight edge there, but not enough is built up just yet. So 11 minutes in, Trelly, both teams seemingly happy with the pace of the game, feeling like some of these early objective fights might be in their favor, but Barracuda is going to chunk some good damage onto Mike. But they still want to try to take this obelisk here, making sure to steal these offerings away so they can get control of that Indra Scepter. I have to say, I, Aurora just stopped me when I was walking in for this cast. He was here last game. And he said, dude, that was so cool what you said about the obelisk. A lot of people don't know this, and I, he didn't either. When the offering spawns, it's a, it's a mirrored clock, where if it goes at 12, the next one's going to be on the opposite side at 6. If it goes at 3, the opposite side. And I brought it up, and he's like, dude, that was so cool. You should talk about it, because he, he, I taught Aurora where it <laughs> spawned. I'm like, I saw you invading yeah. them. How did you not know that? And we're going to see. They might try to invade these again, because the offerings were just taken away, but not completed was the obelisk. So still, if the bolts want to try to take this one away, they still have the option to. It looks like... Aurora was just, what? reacting as they popped up, I suppose, but you're saying that you can really calculate. If you really want to min-max that moment, you have a way, what do you say, it's a mirrored clock? Yeah, it's a mirrored clock, so if, if you see one... The first one spawns up top. It's the exact opposite side. You can then go down side. to the bottom, we'll just bounce back and forth at that point, Exactly. He said, that That's was right. so cool, man. You taught me how the <laughs> obelisks work. I'm like, bro, you were invading these. You, you, you gotta wear, like, a badge of honor. <laughs> you, you taught Aurora something that he didn't know, and I bet you taught a lot. You taught me something that I didn't know. I always just thought... I don't, I'll walk over to it whenever it pops out, but now I know that you can predict it. And so, not even a prediction, that's just a calculation. You know where it's going to spawn out. But uh, it doesn't result in much early here. Mike was low, but able to complete the obelisk now for the Jade Dragon. So a small advantage over there. Looks like Sam from Soccer will be the one to go ahead and drop the Interceptor down. Uh, and one of the Jade Dragons will head over and pick that one up. Both Gold Fury and Pyromancer are on the map at this point. And this is usually when you have to start to look at, you know, which sides of the map are stronger. Where do we want to start to fight? You know, do the Olympus Bolts or the Jade Dragons feel better on the Gold Fury fight? Same question can be asked for the Pyromancer fight. When things are as even as they are, it could be difficult to answer a question like that. But at this point in the game, Trelly, you think both teams are feeling maybe as confident around either of the two objectives. It just depends on who gets a better fight. Yeah, I think both these teams are still able to push up and fight right now, but there is a very obvious XP lead in the favor of the Jade Dragons right now, just looking at all the levels on the board. I mean, Final K's build just looks more solid than Haddix's right now with the Stone of Binding. It's going to be a great item in that yeah. slot. You just you essentially have two and a half items to Haddix's one, and the teleport is available if you want to try to help out your team at these Gold Fury fights, as well as the fact that Sam for Soccer is very strong right now. He was able to pick up that Scepter, as we mentioned, a lot of auto attack damage already. Stone, stone Cutting Sword, as well as the Berserker Shield, and very close to that Shogun's, but look at what he's doing right yeah. now. He's on Pyro, man. He's got a lot of damage Sam does on the Pyro, but the Olympus Bolts are going to reply. It's a stun from Final K onto Haddix. Pyromancer gets dropped, though. J Dragons had enough damage, but again, enough pushback from the Olympus Bolts that made the Dragons think twice around the objective on the right side. That was a heap of damage from Sam for Soccer onto the Pyro, but he had taken a lot in exchange. Lasper just trying to keep up in, uh, in levels and XP to his counterpart on the other side of the jungle. And Osiris jungle is such a unique look here for, for Sam. You know, when I, when I think Sam, I'm thinking Mercury's the more eclectic picks, you know, like uh, sticking with the assassins regardless of what the meta in the jungle is. But I feel like Osiris always withstood that. You know, regardless of what Sam wanted to be playing at the time, there was always an Osiris jungle in the back pocket and has one kill now, but seemingly happy with just playing the farm game. 
Yeah, as long as you're able to keep your team even or, in this case, ahead, I think you're doing just fine on this Osiris jungle. A decent late game as well. Bumba's Hammer. Any jungler that's able to use Bumba's Hammer late game is going to be very solid. I mean, just the, the cooldowns, auto resets, that sort of thing is going to help out so much. And with Sam's build, he's going to be able to get the full benefits yep. of that item if that is the, the way he chooses to itemize here. And I think he probably will. But looking on the other side, Haddix recognizes the auto attack damage that the J-Dragons have and will go for the Witch Blade. We've seen a big influx of this Witch Blade item. Item. Yep. That just slows the attack speed of all of the, you know, anyone that's around you, essentially. With the Cthulhu, there's going to be a lot of people around you, especially when you go into that Descent into Madness. It's interesting because I feel like we've seen Witchblade for double ADC comps, and then like doubly so in, in a situation like this where you might have double ADC and an, and an auto attack style jungler. Um, but realizing Witchblade will get you some value up against Just Sam and Panda Cat. And Panda Cat and Barracuda have split mindsets on builds here. As Panda's gone Crusher, Aussie into the chin size. So he'll get some health shred later in this game. As Barracuda with the crit, that might help him out around the Gold Fury. They'll need some help though. Rivers Rebuke up in the bolts. Confirm the Gold Fury, but Sam for Soccer is low on the other side. Attempted to steal. Will Lord of the Afterlife away? It's just an auto attack from Barracuda. A whole 129 damage. That confirms the Gold Fury for the Olympus Bolts. And wouldn't you guess it, Trelly, that brings this game right back to even. Yeah, it was just a great ult by Barra and Jake, making sure that if Sam wanted to go for any type of steal, he would either have to pre-ult the ult and not turn into a pig, or use your beads, which Sam did not want to do. So, Sam was a pig. He wasn't able to use any abilities. He got he got polymorphed and can't really defend that goal if you're there. So, great play by the Bolts, making sure to continue... I would say continue their lead, but they don't They don't have a goal lead. They tried to even it back up, I'll say. The farm game has not been as pristine as they would like, but... Hey, the gold's evened up at this point. And yeah, I think Panda Cat just recognizes how much HP Haddix is going to have. Yep. Even Jake, possibly last if he wants to itemize into it. So the chin size just get a little bit more benefit. But Haddix's dash might get caught there. Yeah, it does have to use Lord of the Afterlife. Or, uh, or Send to Madness, rather. As Pyromancer again pulled by the J Dragons, but again dropped. As just a couple members of the Olympus Bolts show up. A bit more tentative the J Dragons are over here on the right side of the map. Not fully committing to a pyromancer pull. I mean, you got Final Judgment, so it's kind of you know you got Burn on one side in your mid lane with the Merlin on the other side. You might you might have better confirm with with this Thoth as uh, Divine Ruin, Sphere of Desolation, and Soul Reaver completed for Pagon. Venenu has two of those items, but instead of the Deso, has Chronos Pendant. So similar power as far as just builds go. For, uh, for both of the mid laners at this point in the game trail. You know, I do think Ven ha you know, has reached that point. You're a few items in, and now you can expect this Merlin to chunk. Yeah, we're definitely at that point in the game where Ven starts to get dove. He can at least take out some health bars with him. I mean, Merlin, with this much cooldown, you want to have your flicker up as much as possible, especially when you're dealing with the die from... I mean, the RDO, Final K hasn't made the rotation yet, but Jake is taking a lot of damage. Uh, Jake is good for one a game where he's just in the wrong spot, and this is the one for the Jade Dragons. But now Final K is rotated over towards left as well. Barracuda's got a lot of damage, but doesn't have this much. He's survived a long time. But the best he's going to be able to do is chunk down a few members of the J Dragons. Unfortunately for the Dragons, no objective spawn here on the left side of the map. Fortunately for the Dragons, good old map control has gotten them a 2,000 gold lead despite the kills being even and despite the Olympus Bolts getting the first Gold Fury of the game. Now, two members down of the Olympus Bolts. What can the Jade Dragons get done? Diving Venenu is the answer. Beats an Aegis. That's not going to help you out much longer. Lazaro would love to hold on. Too bad out of hell, which he will. And the Jade Dragons finding a lot of individual picks. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that one. I mean, everyone knew Final K was in left lane. I'm not sure why they were still thinking they were safe in the Tier 1 tower. I mean, at this point, Ardio just so tanky. Haddix, in my, in my mind, made the right call. Final K makes it teleport over, kills Barracuda. Haddix realizes there's no objective up over there. I'm going to stay in my lane and rot and just, you know, push farm. Didn't end up going for that tower because his team was in danger in the mid lane. So finally rotates over late, doesn't really get to help out there. But I think the right call was just to farm up after that gank, after Barrett falls. And of course, Jake was way too far up and fell as well. There's really not much else you want to fight over. So now you don't get that tower. You lose the tier one and you lose two members. Olympus Bolts now need a way back into this game after falling pretty decent margin behind in a couple important roles. ADC and support both a level ahead for the Jade Dragons. Mid also a level ahead. It's really in the jungle where the widest margin is. Just the two levels, but Sam for Soccer definitely stronger than Lazaro at this point. Though serrated edge 
on the Kamazots will help out with some backline dive, but we just haven't seen that opportunity just yet, Trey. The Jade Dragons haven't allowed the Bolts to take a full 5v5 where, where Cthulhu and Kamazots are going to be swinging onto Pagan. Bolts now considering a three versus two on left. Petrify clips Lasbra. Jake didn't get the memo that we're leaving. Throws up River's Rebuke. And the Jade Dragons <laughs> will use the uh, the Phantom Shell for Mike. Didn't really need it. There's a couple ultimates exchanged on left. And no team worth for, worse for wear. Yeah, the Bolts definitely overcommitted there, but getting the Phantom Shell is a huge win, I would say. Jake probably getting a lot more than he really wanted at that point because it probably should have been a wasted ult as he takes a little bit of poke here. Sam for Soccer is doing a lot of damage, as you mentioned. But Ven might be in some trouble even underneath this Tier 2 tower. Yeah, Ven had to use both actives a moment ago. Remember, still 45 seconds on both beats and Aegis. Stun out from Jake, and it's effective, but only effective in slowing down. The tier one tower falling, does end up falling no matter what. Now the Jade Dragons have well-timed this push. Jake without River's Rebuke is gonna have a much harder time controlling a fight around this Primal Fury if the Olympus Bolts wanna take it. But Dave, the, the Bolts are all spread out all over the map. I'm not sure there's gonna be a fight anyway. As awesome Jake will step forward, but needs to think twice about his exact positioning here. That's an abduct from Mike. And that is one dead awesome Jake. Jade Dragons now have a much easier time on the Primal Fury. Yeah, I don't even think anyone's going to rotate over at this point. We can see where Lazbra is right now, farming up camps on the right. The Gold Fury will go down with no steal attempt anywhere even close at this point. Haddix making sure to just get some farm on the right side of the map as well. So the Jade Dragons just recognize how much pressure they have and the fact that Awesome Jake doesn't have beads. We already mentioned how this Kepri pick likes to stay back but can get aggressive. The Abducts are going to be there and they have the damage right now to burn through Awesome Jake's health bar. The level 14 Yemoja cannot withstand the level 20 Panacat. <laughs> nope, definitely not. Panacat very strong in his build. And a bit of a difference, again, remember, it's chin size really instead of Wind Demon. That's the main difference right now. But Panacat has also been able to upgrade his starter item where Barracuda has not. Not just yet. Top net worth in the game, Panacat and Final K both tied. Barracuda about a thousand gold behind those two. Lasbro will jump out of the root, just transfer the root a little bit further back in the fight. Pyromancer will spawn here shortly. This is going to be a pretty telling moment in this game, Trelly, with how confident the Bolts are feeling. How confident can they feel? It's a double stun and then a petrify, but it's only onto the front line. So you get a decent ultimate out of the Jade Dragons, and that's kept Haddix and Jake in the fight, but Jake is melting yet again. As Haddix hasn't been able to use Descent into Madness, and Jake has got to leave. The Jade Dragons have taken next to no damage. The Olympus Bolts front line feeling limited. Yeah, I feel like there were some wasted ultimates there, but the Jade Dragons are still winning this fight pretty handily at this point. The carries full HP bars, but they're getting zoned out. Mardio, even Pagon is stepping up here to Whoa. try to zone. Jade Dragons are on the FG. Haddix has to set into madness. Will the Jade Dragons pull off the objective? Looks like it, but Sam for Soccer has been left alone with the carries. Lazra unable to finish off the kill onto Sam. Maybe Haddix can get something done. Scarab's Blessing used early in this fight. Double root on the back line for Polar Bear Mike. Slows down the back line of the Bolts. On their reinitiation board is Awesome Jake controlling the front line. And he's got to give Venenu time to cast, but look at the health bars melt. Panda Cat can walk forward now. Final K alongside Barracuda desperately trying to life steal already. It's a two for one in favor of the Bolts. And they'll disengage as such, despite the health bars being lower. The Bolts are able to win the kill trade. But the J Dragons can hang around the FG. Panacat has Death's Embrace. The healing and lifesteal is going to be plenty here. And Sanford Soccer's already back. They're going to have to run in very quickly if the Olympus Bolts yeah. want to try to make a defense. Haddix is already very low. Haddix and Vera, they've, they've got to go here. Final K, though, rotates into Haddix, who is dashed on by Panacat. And Barracuda does not have his ultimate back. Not just yet. Lasbra melted through as well. And Panacat has got a double. The J Dragons juggle that fight so effectively continuously baiting in the Olympus Bolts. Awesome Jake stops the back of Final K, who dashes out of the ultimate from Barracuda. This fight has been going on for like four minutes, and one by one, members of the Olympus Bolts die off. It's a deicide at the end of the day, as Venenu now back and respawning with the rest of his team at least 30 seconds away. I gotta say, that whole fight started off with one of the sickest River Rebukes I've ever seen. It was just such a displacement and put Pagon way out of position. He actually had to dash in aggressively to try and get in position in that fight. He uses both relics. They find the kill on Athoth. Yep. And then it was just so much lifesteal in hand for the Medusa, so they didn't actually have to leave the fight despite having the numbers advantage. Haddix run with 1 HP. 
Fine OK has cripples to make sure that everyone of the Olympus Bolts is not able to escape if they do show face at the Fire Giant. And now the J Dragons have, I would say, a free objective on their hands. It's felt a bit like discombobulated from the Bolts over the last few minutes, hasn't it? Where, where the J Dragons, even in a kill deficit, maintain level heads, even with the Bolts getting that first Gold Fury, it was the, the map gold going over to the, the Dragons. And then that fight, you know, they're, they're thin margins where the bolts hang in pretty effectively early. But it just felt like a conveyor belt. I mean, that, that was a yeah. conveyor belt of a fight for the Olympus bolts by the end of it. And the J Dragons, namely Panda Cat, who comes up huge, uh, just a little bit stronger down the stretch as a pause, delays what could be a soon ending game number one. We'll get back in and update you as quickly as we can. Uh, but, I, but I think this is a good look for the J Dragons as, as a team especially with the way the early game went, because this is a team that's not immune to falling behind early. And so sticking in it mentally and getting this game back under control, now getting a fire giant on all five members and a massive gold lead, I, I think speaks volumes to the mentality of this team and, and their ability to deal with a difficult game state and still find a win. Yeah, and we're now looking at the, these massive power spikes out of the J Dragons. Bumba's hammer completed for Sam for Soccer. Four and one right now on this Osiris jungle. And we're going to continuously see more of those auto attacks shred through Ven's health bar. Even the tanks at this point are not going to want to box the Osiris. Of course, Pagon did dash in and use both relics, but still is able to finish that pendulum. So another upgraded starter for them. The J Dragons are looking very solid right now in their team fight and their push. Unfortunately, Lazarus, still level 19, is not going to be able to upgrade that Protector or Seer of the Jungle, respectively, whichever one he wants to go for. And Jake's sitting at level 15 as well, so not the best team fight presence, but with River's Rebuke, you have a decent option to try to trap people in that Phoenix if you are trying to defend here. So the Olympus Bolt's certainly not out. Merlin, also a lot of large AoE damage yep. underneath that Phoenix as well. You can sort of just toss out big circles that the J Dragons are going to try to avoid. But looking at how tanky Final K's been, looking at how much damage Sam for Soccer can do, and as well as the fact that Pagon, despite having to use both relics, probably doesn't have to step up that far. They're going to try to pick Final K here, this though. This would be a good pick, but look how tanky and how mobile this RDO is. That is just obnoxious. Final K with four members of the Bolts looking at him, takes no damage. Now Final K can delay the backs. This is massive. The J Dragons not allowing the Bolts to rally around their right side. Phoenix keeping Awesome Jake and Lazbra from backing into base. And now the J Dragons could just walk at this mid lane tier two. <laughs> that was the siege that was not to be, as the Bolts just can't get back to base. Yeah, and they weren't able to pick up any real farm during that either. So just another lead climbing for the J Dragons. Now 10k. As well as the fact that there's still tier two towers. That's one in the mid down, but the one on the left side is still yet to fall 11,000. So this, the, the opportunity for the bolts to defend is really climbing a little bit out of the wayside here. They need to find a really sick engage. I like the fact that they were trying to find a pick in the jungle. Final K, probably not the one they wanted to find though. As the last tier two tower of the game will go down. Two minutes left, minute and 45 or so. I'd love to see gold in hand actually at the moment because 11,000 gold is, is strong. So <laughs> Sam has a massive power spike around the corner, 3,500 gold once he goes back. So Sam likely, Trelly, would, would, would be asking his team, all right, let's get this Primal Fury, let's reset one more time, and then we've probably got a minute by the time we get back. And the rest of the team, you know, going to be around that two 2,000 gold mark. And so 11,000 gold is going to be amplified, and, and really now all of those big item spikes are rolling through as far as gold differentials go as another chin size, as, uh, as Rosie helps us out there, completed for Sam for Soccer here. Alex has had a hard enough time staying alive this game. Uh, now that's twofold as Sam for Soccer and Panda Cat have finished their anti-Cthulhu items. Yeah, unfortunate because there's just I mean, there's going to be a lot of shred coming through if you're looking at the J Dragons draft. I mean, Osiris, if gets to really anyone right now. It's going to be doing crazy amounts of damage. We've seen how much Panda Cat is outputting right now. Pretty far over anyone else on the damage charts. Only close to him is fine. Okay, really, Barracuda is sort of up there, but it's just a lot, and the Odibo was the yeah. last item in the slot. So more AoE damage grouping up underneath this Phoenix with the lightning bouncing back and forth, getting some Silver Branch procs as well because Medusa has that crazy auto attack stim on her first ability, Viper Shot. It's going to be very difficult to try and defend this, and you already have your right Phoenix down. If they just wait for those minions to push in, someone's it's going to be a 4v5. There's Pagon, the Artillery Mage, 0, 1, and 2. Hasn't shown us much yet this game. This is where Thoth can really make his money. Need to see more out of Ven on the defense as well. At 1, 3, and 1, only above the supports on the damage charts. When you are near full build Merlin, 
later on into the game, this is where the damage can start to roll. Polar Bear might caught between a couple of Riptides and Haddock sends him back through one more. River's Rebuke is up. Mike has used Scarab's Blessing on himself, but Venenu, I called his name and he will not answer as Panda Cat adds another. Sam for Soccer alive on the back line with a double kill. Haddock's at least sweeps through for one, but now it is a two versus four for the Olympus Bolts. The second Phoenix of the game will go down. Minion Waves pushing in, and Teleport out of final K might end this game. Oh, they're going to be going for this end call here. Haddix and Bear against the world. There are some low health bars still. And Barracuda doesn't have ultimate, neither does Haddix. It's going to be difficult. Can't be hit by final judgment if you're Barracuda. If you want to have a hope of defending this game, fire minions are in. Final judgment doesn't connect as final K had the stun, but Barracuda's back in the fountain. Nonetheless, game number one taken over and ended by the Jade Dragons. Yeah, that's just way too much damage coming out of Panda Cat. I mean, he's been full build for a while now, but just seeing all the power spikes he was able to get, they could burn through that Titan, even with the, you know, Barracuda and Haddix. They, they had some defense options, but no, there was just way too much damage from the Dragons. The Dragons snowball this game so effectively. I mean, think about the, the early couple of minutes. The Olympus Bolts are up three to nothing in kills. But, but they didn't necessarily keep that pace hammered down. You right. know, we, we didn't see Lazar on his, on his early game Warpath. We didn't see the, the Olympus Bolts, despite a two kill swing for Barracuda and Duo Lane, snowball that lane out of control. Right. The J Dragons just controlled the map, the gold lead blew up, and then objective fight after objective fight goes in favor of the J Dragons. By the time you're like eight, 9,000 gold in the lead before the first fire giant of the game has gone down, uh, I think you're feeling pretty confident if you're the Jade Dragons. And so a good game number one look from the Dragons. Bolt's not a team that you can ever count out, though. Game number two will certainly have some intrigue. Let's see what it is after this break.
one of the set goes over to the Jade Dragons here up against the Olympus Bolts. And maybe a little bit contrarian compared to what we were thinking of when we were talking about this in the picks and bands in the pregame here of game number one. We talked a lot about the Cthulhu being able to make a lot of space for the team, being yeah. able to isolate a lot of these picks out here. Yeah. But it was kind of the opposite here, Gore. It felt like the Olympus Bolts were the ones who were being separated, isolated out in the middle of these team fights, and the Dragons were able to capitalize off yeah, this. Yeah, really early on in this game, Bolts feel like they're in control, right? At least enough that they're, they're able to dictate some of the early game. Then all of a sudden, a uh, fight, and then a fury, and then a whole ton of other stuff ends up going the way of the Dragons, and, and they get enough of a lead. It didn't really matter what the Bolts had over there. I think they were comfortable playing it. I will admit, personally, did not expect the Osiris to pop off as hard as it did. I think like you, you can take into account like Thoth, you can look at the Medusa, you can look at the zone that Ardeo can create, and, and like those are always going to to look good, I think, in my mind. Even in like bad games, they're typically going to be able to get something done. Uh, but Sam just looked nuts on this pick, and I think we got to see it a little bit last year. I'm going to be honest, I, I doubted it a little bit going into this because he was falling off towards the end of, of Season 8 anyway. But this Osiris locked in perfectly. You could see anti-heal application was really good at the very beginning of some of these fights, Something uh, a very easily and oft-overlooked aspect of the Lord of the Afterlife. And then it was just damage and kills, and he was kind of leading the whole way. They didn't seem to have an answer for dealing with him, and he closed the gap very consistently. I also have to, you know, shout out, I guess, or the opposite of a shout out, call out the other side, which is that, you know, you had Pagon doing good damage, Panic Hat doing good damage, Sam obviously doing good damage from the highlights you can see. Uh, and then virtually the opposite coming down from Vin, there was not a lot that came out from specifically this Merlin when you expect something and almost like need something more. I think there was a point, David called it out, he was sitting like barely, barely above the supports and still was able to, to maintain above the supports, but 8,000 when your counterpart does 10k more damage, more than twice what you were able to put out, and nobody else is really even within a close range. I mean, 6,000 is the gap from the lowest damage dealer on the Dragons to where Vin was. So I think that there was a lot missing from the mid lane on the Bolts, and then a lot of success from the picks on the Dragons that just equaled a very controlling game once they were able to, to pull that lead back. Yeah, I mean, we saw good success out of the Bolts in the dual lane to start that game out. I mean, there was two kills that happened over in that dual lane, uh, one of them, on, uh, I believe, on to Mike and another one on to Panda after that one. Both those kills going to Barracuda. So Barra got to start off with a nice 2-0 start. But from that point onward, I mean, we just didn't see any real fight back from the Bolts. A lot of these team fights felt like they were kind of hindering themselves. You know, Venenu constantly caught out by himself, wasn't able to really impact the team fights very much. Uh, Lasbro trying to go for these 1v1s, he wasn't able to come up fruitful on here. And so maybe it's back to the drawing board, at least for the Bolts here. There were some, some highlights that were coming out of this draft. Obviously, the Emoja is still going to be very strong. The Cthulhu from Haddix still creating a decent amount of space out here. But uh, I think you're right to kind of point out here, it just felt like the backline of the Bolts wasn't able to get a whole lot off this game. Yeah, and I think that that's, that's going to be the, the big change, right? I think that the Kamazots and the Emoja and the Cthulhu, all really good picks in, in theory. Maybe they didn't get to, to play and execute at the level that we know those picks can play at. But then all of a sudden the Kernanos, and more specifically, though, the Medusa did not really, or not the Medusa, the Merlin, the other M god that was in the game, <laughs> just did not did not live up to, I think, the standards that we wanted from, especially with an early lead going over towards Barra. So I think that that's going to be the biggest change. Whether it's a different mage or if it's just play style, something's got to change because you can't have 8k damage after the, the end of that game with all the fighting that went on. Yeah, so we'll get into picks and bans here for game two between the Bolts and the Dragons. Still going to be same bans to start things out as it was in game number one. Hubwa and Uller on the side of the Bolts, and the Dragons can continue their same bans here of Erlong, Shen, Clean. I believe Daji was the final ban that came from the Dragons this time. But the Bolts will change up at least their third ban here. Yamoja going to make her way in here, which tells me now that while Jake did have a decent game on the Emoja here, obviously not wanting to play it this time around, so not wanting to give that one over to Mike. Yeah, and it feels like this now is, I don't know whether it's a Jake call or if it's coming externally, but like a Yamoja worked well and like from what we could see worked well, but wasn't what they needed or wanted in order to, to set things up, which based on what we've seen out of the bolts lately means that I'm expecting an Eset or a Nox. I'm sure that's kind of what the, the Dragons are talking about now is that if you go for, you know, an ESET ban, Nox has been pretty solid 
anyway, so it's not going to be a big deal. If you go for the Nox ban here, you force them into an ESET, but you take away the counter pick in it that, that you would immediately have in having a Nox over there. So, like, there's a, a, a wide variety, I think, of discussions to have about what Jake could bring into this. I think that they've got a very wide god pool as well in the support role, so it makes it a little more difficult, I think, all around to try and figure out where or where you want to go. But I had mentioned Samash, I think it was like three games last week on the Knox, three wins on the Knox. It's something that the Bolts play, and they play really well, so it makes sense for that to be the, the go-to to get away. Yeah, there will be the ban from the Jade Dragons for the third one. Knox taken away here, so kind of removing that tug-of-war aspect that you were bringing up between the East set. You can even throw Geb kind of in that, that triangle mix there uh, of kind of counterplay potential between those gods there, so... Won't at least see the knocks come from the side of the bolts. Instead, it'll be a Gilgamesh first pick. Make sure to pick up one of the hot hand warriors right now. I, I mean, still have one of the revenge. one of the few warriors that that's really been showing a prominence into the jungle. Between that, the Erlong, Vincent, Shiva, and I guess now Osiris has kind of made his way back in here. So, <laughs> so the core three we had from season eight now plus a Shiva, as far as that's concerned. But that opens up the E set pick for the side of the Jade Dragons, and that one paired with the Medusa could just spell the dual lane for the Dragons. And I actually really like this, uh, you know, because going through to look at it, outside of, of the picks that are now no longer on the board, Jake hasn't played a whole ton this year. I guess they had a Sobat game, which they were able to win. So, like, there's there's not, like, a, a deficit of picks for Jake to go to, but every other god other than Horus that he has played in support He's only played once up to this point. So it's just not necessarily maybe the trend that the Bolts would like. And with Isa being taken off the board again, the Nox has already been been banned. So the counter to what was the, the essential Nox support or just, or sorry, ESET support and essentially the ESET mid, even if they want to flex it over there, has just been stripped away. Will she work out in mid? I could say, yeah, but d do you like her over there? Not particularly. I think that we've seen her and Mike has piloted her actually really well out of the duo lane, and that can be really aggressive. Spirit Ball, Wing Gust, plus the damage that Medusa has, the Acid Spray to clear off minions. I mean, immediately you are taking control of the duo lane, and then you start talking team fights. Well, you've got Circle of Protection. Like, the downside is you're waiting, what, two, three items before you start to feel like substantial <laughs> in a team fight. You don't exist or at least survive too long until you've got you know, like your mask online. If you go Thebes, your Thebes online. And then probably one more item after that to just give you another little lift uh, of survivability. Well, now the Olympus Bolts will pick up Cthulhu and Chiron to round out their top three. Cthulhu back over to Haddix, even when they lost in that last game. Still some very strong success out of this god in particular for this Olympus Bolts team. And then the Chiron... That's gone over towards the mid lane more often than not yep. so far this season for Venenu. Has typically been an answer to gods like the Zeus, which we're not actually seeing any priority towards, at least right now. So we're not going to see that come out here in the Jade Dragons. They'll go with a Thoth as a response there. So some fairly long-range gods to kind of tackle up against each other. And, and talking on your point about, you know, Jake hasn't really had to play too many different gods so far. I, I was actually uh, talking to Cyclone out after their set. He said, man, it kind of sucks. I had to double my god pool today by playing two different gods than I normally have. <laughs> he, so that just tells me he's only played four different gods yep. so far up into this year. But it's the same thing with Jake. He hasn't had to play very much because what he has played has been successful. Exactly, right? And, and like... It's that question of how often can you win with like X before some teams start to ban it for it from you. And I think the Dragons approach this really well. What has been like wildly successful for the Bolts every time they've played it? Well, it's been Nox. Okay, cool. We'll ban the Nox and deal with that. Well, where does Jake go after that? They've been going to the E set. The only thing that beats that consistently that we've seen has been the Nox. That's already off the board, so you strip that one away. Where does Jake go now? The Emoja's already gone. Fafnir's now gone. I, I think that they're limiting the right gods to control a little bit more. But like I said, Jake has played Sobek this year. Jake, you know, has, has a very phenomenal, I'm going to call it, I want to will it into existence. I really liked his tier support when he played it. <laughs> I don't know how well that callback. fares against Eset and Medusa because when you blink, Eset just goes, cool, no to the Fearless. And if you can time it right, then it's, it's just completely time to cancels turn it out. This I doubt we'll see anything like that. Favor. But he has a very weird and eclectic god pool. And I think that benefits the Bolts really well. Talking about weird things out here, Athena, first time here now in the SPL. We saw some success with this god in the SCC and the SPL qualifiers going over in that support role specifically. But now that we do have Eset and Athena, 
it kind of opens up the question, does this Athena go towards the support role where she's more traditionally seen? He said we have seen flex over towards the mid lane, also support, but... I'd be reminiscent if we didn't talk about the fact that Athena solo and jungle are also both capabilities with this team. Do not not only the capabilities name, with this Morgan team. Cherio's the coach. And I can guarantee yeah. Cherio's going, look, guys, when I That's play Athena point. jungle, it's real good. And so I could see that being a very heavy influence of, of Cherio, like, My pushing that one in. I do think, like, drink. if I was going to throw this team around at this point, man, it's it'd be difficult. Probably this is more like it. Wowzers. East Wowzers, man. This is difficult to try <laughs> and figure out. Hold this on. is dragons right here. <laughs> this is what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> My brain did like three resets. I wanted to start in the same place each time, and no matter what, it just doesn't quite click. In this case, hmm, Odin probably hmm, solo. I would prefer him solo just because I hate Odin in the jungle. That's a personal thing. We didn't see him do a real well last year, <laughs> and so I just don't like seeing that. I'd probably give it Athena jungle over towards uh, over towards uh, Sam, and then you know duo lane Isa Medusa Thoth mid, and that just feels like that falls into place. Whether Sam has been influenced by himself or if this is very heavy Coach Cherry like input. I think that it has a lot of potential. I mean, Athena's got a dash. She's got a good taunt. Like, setup is going to be there. And when I see Medusa and Thoth, when I see the damage that they did last time, I don't get to see Sam carrying on this pick the same way that I saw, like, all those kills happen for an Osiris. But you don't have to because you're just pulling people into the carries that are behind you otherwise. You know, it, it did kind of slip my mind there for a moment that Thoth was already picked up when I was talking about the potential of Isek going to the mid. It, it just, I just glossed over it because we're so used to seeing the Thoth at this point that I was like, okay, cool, Thoth, move on. L let's talk about the other cool things that are out here like Isek and Athena. So, yeah, I, I think you're right to talk about the uh, Athena most likely now slating itself over towards the jungle here with, with this well, Isek going support more often here. I mean... I can't really think of too many. I mean, Athena solo or in the well, yeah, Odin it's, jungle. It's, it's, that, it's, it's just those of, last two that can yeah. swap. And the only reason I can give any credit to the Odin uh, is not because of anything that he's done outside of he has the cage. And there's a lot of people susceptible to the cage on the other side, right? Like, that's the opener in my mind, is that if you threw this into the jungle and give fine okay the Athena, which is something that he's piloted and, and pretty successfully, Geb gets locked down. Morgan Le Fay can get locked down. Chiron, Cthulhu, all of them. And so all of a sudden, your level five becomes very important. Again, he's suffered a lot in the jungle. And when it comes down to farm, especially up against a Gilgamesh, I think Sam would have to be on top of his game, like the best Odin gameplay he can bring. But it has a lot of potential. All of that can still be said if it goes solo, right? You're still going to have the cage in late game team fights. It's still going to lock people down. It's just that by that time, I would expect Jake or potentially the Cthulhu, probably Jake though, to have a phantom shell online to help get through. And that's going to be the big kind of devastating blow that this Odin has to deal with. Phantom Shell is just such an easy pickup right now, and you're already getting Shell half the time, so it feels like this is going to be something that the Bolts are going to be able to deal with. If it's in the jungle, they'll struggle against it at least a little early on. Well, we did see as a last two there, it was the Geb and Morgan Le Fay on the side of the Olympus Bolts. Are they going to be able to bring it back here in Game 2 and take us to a Game 3, or are the Bo Dra Jade Dragons going to sweep this one out? Time for a big turnaround now if you're the Olympus Bolts as the Jade Dragons run you over in game number one. And it is indeed Athena Jungle for Sam for Soccer and what could be one final time, Dolson, Trelly, and Rosie on the action for Bolts versus Dragons. Athena Jungle, Trelly, something that many of our viewers might feel like is, is a, a ranked only option. Uh, now out here in the SPL. Yeah, I think we're going to see just how solid of a pick this really is. The The global presence is always going to be super nice, as well as the fact that Athena is one of the best Bumba's Hammer of users in the game right now. We just saw uh, the Osiris with Bumba's Hammer last game, so I think Sam might just be on a Bumba's Hammer kick, possibly trying to get all this late game cooldowns and auto attack rotations with your abilities. It's going to be really nice, as well as the fact that it just synergizes really well with the team. You have the yep. taunt into Final Judgment, Petrify, there's just so much damage options on the table, as well as the fact that Sam could just be anywhere on the map whenever he wants. Quick pause before we get into game number two. Go ahead and put that one on a soundboard uh, as game two uh, around the corner. And I'm excited to see what Sam for Soccer is going to do in the jungle here in this game. Gets the Osiris, something a little bit more standard. Now you got Blink. I mean, look, Blink taunt, early damage. You know, Athena's damage got buffed. I think it was on the two at some point last year. So a little bit more Athena in the SPL, mm. usually in support. Solo lane maybe once or twice. Uh, and so if the J Dragons are able to play kind of that in-your-face aggressive play style, I think Sam could be at the forefront of a lot of it. And that's ignoring 
Fine, okay, on this Odin and solo lane Trelly, which is also a pretty unique pick from what we've seen so far this year. And I think Gore's point is pretty strong. There are a lot of characters on the Olympus Bolts that can be locked down by that cage. Good damage from Panda Cat and Polar Bear Mike will already get lane priority here in Dua. Yeah, they're gonna have to make sure to watch out for Final K's rotations pretty much at any point in the game. And also the fact that Sam for Soccer can make any 1v1 instantly a 2v1 with the damage mitigations of Defender of Olympus. So it's gonna be extremely annoying to try to deal with. You have to always watch when you're jumping in here. But Sam for Soccer is gonna look for a kill on the last, but jump away, it's gonna be good. That's gotta be the big change in this game, I, I think, for the Olympus Bolts, where Laz is now on Gilgamesh. We wanted to see some activity early in game one from the Kamazots. Now you've got Gilg and Blink. And so the timing to get aggressive is here. Yeah, that's unlucky for me. Another caster's curse today, <laughs> as Laz will get active, but it's in the wrong way. It's first blood over to the Jade Dragon. Sam for soccer strikes first. And the Athena jungle off to a good start. Yeah, I'm looking at the skill oh Jake goodness. is going to take a lot of damage here as well. We'll be able to roll on out of there. Lasper obviously has the blink, so any sort of Athena taunt right now is going to get full full utility as long as Awesome Jake isn't there with the stone shield to cancel it out and cleanse it. So Lasper has to be very careful whenever battling near Sam for Soccer. And right now in that 2v2, they just have a lot of damage and a lot of confirmed for said damage. It's going to be very difficult to deal with that, as we already mentioned. And now Lasper has a kill, so that's even more difficult. Yep, Sam for Soccer, if you're able to now convert this into more pressure around the map, uh, things will be looking good for the Jade Dragons. Unless Panda Cat dashes in, which you won't, we will get a look over at exactly what happens here. And I think you're right. Blink in, taunt, jump in from fine, okay. Easy as you like. And so the Jade Dragons able to capitalize on mispositioning there from Lazbra. Though the one kill, you know, can't, I, I think it's important that Laz Trilly keeps up the mentality of remaining active. You can't let that one kill totally throw you from your game plan. The Olympus Bolt's not that far behind just yet. But if Laz, uh, Feels like he's too far behind, needs to farm up. Let's that get into his head. This game could start to spiral. Yeah, Lasper definitely can't let that one fall to his aggression, but Haddix will be able to get his blue buff. So despite a little bit of aggression in that solo lane, Haddix was not the one who falls. It was Lasper, obviously. So he's still sitting fine. He's able to confirm his blue buff and actually hit level five before fine, okay, just because of that. The nature of doing your blue buff first, so a little bit. Of pressure in that lane, but Haddix, again, goes for this teleport. Final K matches that as well, so the rotations are going to be very solid, but still susceptible to the cage. If Haddix does get trapped in the cage, you pretty much have to descend into Madness and try to juke around in there because you have no real way to walk out of it at the moment. It's going to be a difficult way to survive these ganks if Sam for Soccer does try to put some pressure into that solo lane, but just looking at Lazbra seems to be Sam's job here. Winds of Shamash is ready. Luckily for, for the Olympus Bolts, outside of the rotation pressure, of uh, of Sentinel of Zeus, or no? Why am I? Defender of Olympus. Defender of Olympus. There's so many. I'm thinking Anvil of Dawn, Sentinel of Zeus. That's Nike, and and, and it's it <laughs> Defender of Olympus. Got too many defenders and anvils. Uh, with Sam for Soccer's ultimate, it's more rotation, less like immediate gank impact. Though uh, the Athena ultimate can provide that. Polar Bear Mike in behind Jake and Barracuda here. All right, another caster's curse, baby. As Sam for Soccer. We'll send a gank towards... <laughs> I need to just stop talking. <laughs> I gotta stop offering opinions. As an immediate impact ultimate from Sam for Soccer rotates over towards left. Winds of Samash ready for Lazbra. And to my, to my credit, I'm talking like on a gank. It's not like a bat out of hell or like an execute ultimate. It's more an ultimate that facilitates a gank. Uh, and that's exactly what Sam for Soccer makes use of there. Off to a 2-0 start. Spear of Desolation to start off the build here for Athena. I think you were just showing how well you know the game, and that, that's all it was. It, it yeah, was... we're just before that. I'm mixing up three abilities. right? <laughs> <Okay>. I... <laughs> well, that was not the point I was trying to make. You you threw yourself under I the did. bus with You're that right. one. But yeah, I did. either way, there was a little bit of a gank opportunity there. So Lazbra getting the beads down on Pagan, I think showing that he's not going to let that one first blood fall into him. Trying to still get aggressive. The beads on Thought is still a win, even though the kill wasn't there. And the winds of Samash could have came down. I think Ven probably had the ult as well. So there was a little bit of avenue to try to dive that. Playing safe but calculated, I think, right now is the Bolts play style. As we're making sure to get those beats, they still have an opportunity to come back and try to put some more pressure on the Pagon, but it looks like Barracuda actually will be able to steal away this purple buff with the help of Awesome Jake. He's going to wear that one around his belt, and the Harpy as well, so getting a little bit of answer back here on this left side. Yeah, just some pressure over on the left as PBM had to go back to base. 
will walk back in. Couple Spear of Desolation is now completed for Pagon and Sam for soccer. So fighting around this mid lane right now, the, the 2v2 in mid, when Sam and Pagon combine, are gonna have a mountain of damage towards everyone, maybe outside of Haddocks at this point here in the game. Polar Bear Mike begins his journey. And that's a, a stone of binding for Mike as well. And I, I like this mindset, I think, across the board from the Jay Dragons trail, which is just damage and, and getting aggressive. Uh, as the Olympus Bolts, again, still not far. I mean, it's a 1,000 gold, but you're still not far enough behind to totally give up your game plan. But look where Jake is. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure what Jake is doing on this side of the map. Uh, it should be a kill eventually. Maybe Sanford Soccer gets onto a killing spree. What an exciting chase down this is. Normally, it would be support versus support, but this time it's jungle with a little They're extra damage. They're both mirrored sides of the map Jake, right Jake now. Jake will die at some point. There we go. Sanford Soccer now on a killing spree. And Mike will also die at some point. Both supports go down on the opposite sides of the map from one another. At six minutes. And it's Bo Junglers who pick up the kill. So now Lazra might get the ball rolling a bit for the bolts. No, that was an interesting one. Making sure to confirm the obelisk at least. So Mike did. Mike at least had an idea in mind for why he was there. I don't think Jake. I think Jake might have just been out of position, tried to run away as far as he could to that side of the map. There's a chase down happening over by the speed buff as Sanford Soccer looked at by Laz. And Lazra will get another kill. All right. So some overextensions. From the J Dragons have now given two kills over to Lazbra. And that's a shutdown for Lazbra as well, Trelly. And so actually a decent avenue back into this game now for the Bolts. I have no idea. None of these have been like good fights or picks. <laughs> it's just been supports overextended. And now Sam for Soccer a bit overextended. And Lazbra has a, a next PB now out of the jungle, despite Sam off to a 3 0 start. Gets shut down by Lazbra. So golden XP over to Laz. And Venenu will walk back into lane here, even in levels with Pagon, who's back on this thought. Morgan Le Fay, a couple assists on a couple kills for the Bolts. You know what I find very interesting Tell is me. the fact that the J Dragons have three mages, right? They, they have a lot, or, well, not three mages, three magical damage dealers, and the fact that Athena is a guardian in the jungle. So Haddix has to optimize in a physical defense against this Odin, but that means he's susceptible to the damage that Sanford Soccer has. Final case in the same boat where he's against the guardian. But Lazbra's on a warrior, so physical damage. Instead of building defense, he just builds HP, which is going to help him out <laughs> in both guards. So right. I think Final K, just a heads up play, a smart call on the build there, recognizing that he's dealing with not only physical, but magical damage in this lane, and itemizes accordingly. And Blackthorn was all the rage last year. The Petrified from Panda Cat on the Barracuda. Awesome, Jake gets rooted in place, has to use the Cataclysm, Sam for soccer over, and that is a mountain of damage. And Panda Cat knocks down Awesome Jake for the second time this game. The Geb will crumble. This will give PBM a little bit of time on the map to build a lead as Haddix teleports in to a stun and a silence for Polar Bear Mike. As the ultimate will pop and the heal is through for Polar Bear Mike with the body blocks from the massive Cthulhu. Work wonders. The Olympus Bolts fighting back in. Panda Cat has next to no mana. Haddix tanking up the tier one tower effectively. It's a knock up on the Panda Cat. As a lot of damage rolls through, it's going to take a miracle play, but that miracle won't arrive, and the bolts have evened up the kills. I was wondering when someone was going to come and help Haddix. I mean, he was tanking that for so, yeah, long. For so long. Now, Sam Soccer is going to look for some return damage on the last, but going into the breastplate of Valor, though, so not too much damage. We've seen the Spear of Desolation, but there won't be another power spike in this Athena's build for at least some time. Check out Final K, though. He did not rotate. He decided to steal away as much farm as he could in the back, and he's going to take these backs as well. So denying some of Lazarus' farm, I, I would say right now the rotation from Haddix a little bit more impactful, but you're stealing away as much farm as you can. And no Gold Fury was taken, so the Jade Dragons are still going to be ahead off that. What a, what a fun, dynamic game we've already got here in Game 2, complete with overextensions and Athena jungles and... It could be another kill, but Polar Bear Mike is good at the game, so he gets a double stun, and now Sam for Soccer gets to leave for free. I mean, the, and now the Bolts have fought back in. Lazbra in a good, strong spot now for the Olympus Bolts. And so I, I think that's where I, I turn my eyes to Trelly, where the Jade Dragon's still driving the pace. Jade Dragon's still in the lead as far as gold goes, but Lazbra in a strong spot with Blink and a one-level lead over Sam for Soccer. Can maybe start to make some waves. Well, you know, I was thinking maybe mid, but we've seen zero, zero eyes towards mid lane, really, in back-to-back -back games now this set. Looks like these teams destined to be fighting either on right or on left. And it seems like Jake really has not left this duo lane once. He seems to be sitting, trying to soak up as much farm as possible. 
in turn, probably putting Barracuda a little bit behind, but Haddix is getting grushed upon. Yeah, but Final K now gets left alone. Will jump out. Cage is already missing. That's a three versus two. Jay Dragons actually don't fall far behind, and Sanford Soccer dashes forward. Now blinks forward. Taunts Haddix back in! And the ranged auto, I think, would have finished off that kill, but now Benenu has an opening. Has his ultimate as well. One shot good. Two and three find their way onto Fine OK, and the Olympus Bolts have swung back. But Pagon will now dash forward. Final judgment not needed. Fine OK jumps in, and yet again, back to even. Very solid rotation by Pagon, making sure that Fine OK couldn't just juke out the Raven jump and, you know, finish that one off. So making sure to follow the match, the rotation. What is happening? Of Nenu, but it looks like they're going to be pulling this Gold Fury back and forth. Awesome Jake and Barracuda are well aware of this. There's no way this play goes well, and they are going to call it off. So smart to recognize, at least, even though you have a little bit of a lead and, you know, there was action on the right side of the map, you can't sneak a Gold Fury. 2v2 at this point, you're just going to tank up yep. way too much damage. Barracuda, though, will steal away the Harpy. And uh, going back to the old farm game, I will say, Final K is on the... Oh, hold that thought, Pagon. <laughs> yeah, you thought. You thought we were back to the farm game. Those, uh, you had thoughts on Final K, I think, prior to Jake rolling on through. Yeah, I mean, Final K is on this hammerhead shark skin where Haddix is a squid. <laughs> I'm not sure. In the, in, ah. the, in the wildlife, I'm not sure I if they I have to imagine a hammerhead shark eat squids out in the wild. That's what I'm saying. Are they like natural predators? If they just ran into each other, would they fight? It's, it's curious oh, right. to see so who it's would not win. even so much who would win, it's would they even brawl. Because, That's what I'm saying. Because if the two fight, it's, it's a one it's a one gobbling done for fine okay over a squid as a hammerhead shark for sure. But squids are, you know, they're nimble. They have the, the, the ink cloud and they can, or is that, that squid, right? Or is yeah. that octopus? No, octopus change colors, and maybe, and maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of Nemo now. Where, where she, I, I'm trying to figure out as best I can the anatomy like, of a squid. The other day on the desk, I can't do like 60 plus 20, and now I can't remember which animals have squid defense mechanisms or not. I swear I paid attention in school. Squidward inks and SpongeBob, that's what I'm going to use that's as right. we look You're back right. at this lane. You're right. Pretty much just a slap fight. They aren't really trying to aggress upon each other too much. As we see Mike over here on the left side. Possibly out of position, but also getting a little bit aggressive. Awesome Jake will roll through. Yeah, that's not good for us, or, or really for me. I kind of go down a rabbit hole there. We finally get a break in the game, uh, and I choose to discuss whether or not squids and octopus <laughs> uh, both have the, the ink defense mechanisms. I do like what I've seen from the Bolts, despite an aggressive early game from the Dragons. The Bolts have been able to stabilize, and so I think that's been a fantastic look for them. Barracuda well underway into a strong build here. Looks like ability-based is the mindset of Barra. He's gonna go Transcendence into Jotuns. So watch out backlines. Watch out Jake. Cataclysm used defensively yet again. Jake pretty tanky. You know, with all the damage that was there, is Barracuda and now dashed on Ven. Has finished off a kill. On to Pagon as Panda Cat will return one as well. Sam for Soccer has to dash away. Haddix rotates through. And this Cthulhu can swing. Big damage on the back of the fight as Panacat won't be able to turn around the damage. Venenu's got a double. Another knockup on the Polar Bear. Mike, but Sam has blinked back in. Has a double taunt and then a dash away. And that's set up another on the fine. Okay. But Awesome Jake rolls in. Has his first kill of the game. And with all the damage off the map, Lazbra Haddix will go up against PBM and fine. Okay. Dropkick canceled out by Mike as a roll through from Awesome Jake in the knockup, and we will be done as respawns are coming through from the beginning of this fight. Final K has Genji's guard. Every few seconds he's getting his cooldowns reset. PBM is the only kill here, and there is an option, and there oh it goes. God. At this point, I feel like Final K still unkillable with this amount of HP. Just the resets. He has his shield up every so often, and they will have to retreat. As you mentioned, the respawns are here. Pagon is barreling down, possibly trying to defend the Gold Fury if the Bolts wanted to look at it, but they don't have the HP bars to do that. They couldn't even go for that Tier 1 tower dive. Barracuda has also spawned back in. Smart play, not going to the left side of the map, trying to get some farm on the right side. Venenu may be a big winner in that fight, though Pagon, who's able to stick around and farm up a little bit, maintains a slight experience lead over Ven, though levels are the same. Uh, Ven now consistently has made good use of his rotations into these fights. Kill over on right, now a double kill on the left side of the map. He hits a good power spike now with some percent pen in the obsidian shard. Lazbra gets a little bit as well as Soul Eater. Started up for Gilgamesh out of the jungle. <laughs> Scrapping, fighting seems to be the name of the game early. And some good power spikes for the Olympus Bolts. The Jade Dragons on the flip side. Potentially looking towards a couple Soul Reavers. Definitely one for Pagon. But the circle protection around the Gold Fury. Can Jake 
make a miracle play, not through a circle of protection, and a petrify. And the Jade Dragons will pull the Fury, get the Fury, and build up a big gold lead. Yeah, they even had final judgment if they wanted to go for it here. Sam for Soccer recognizes this Pyromancer pull pretty much immediately and has the taunt to pull them teleport. off the objective, so they're not going to be able to go for this for free. Sam for Soccer, double taunt, teleport in from Final K as Cataclysm from Jake. Starts off this fight, Centaurus in the back from Venenu will help out the Olympus Bolts in securing the Pyromancer. The cage is huge! Refine, okay, they can't get out! Four members of the Bolts desperately trying to escape, but there is negative damage from the Jade Dragons to get any of these kills. Finally, some rolls through as Haddix gets chipped away, but Awesome Jake just way too tanky. That is a dream cage from Fine OK. And not enough damage just yet in these builds to melt all of those targets down. Pyromancer to the Olympus Bolts, but a kill over to the Jade Dragons. Yeah, the cage was massive as well as the fact that, I mean, Sam for Soccer has almost 100% kill participation right now. Anytime these taunts are coming through, the follow-up is always there. And it seems like Sam's always in the, the great play to make the pulls. I mean, he has this taunt available, and Venenu is getting chunked down. We'll find another <laughs> one off the can, taunt man. I can. of what Sam for happening? Soccer. What's happening in this game? This is one of the faster-paced SPO games, and I mean that in a good way. I don't mean, like, what's happening is, is, like, this game is too chaotic or anything. There's just, there's so much going on on the map. And I, I can't imagine the shot calling in, in, in the style of, of, of objective calls that these teams have to look at in a game where you have uh, Athena ultimate and double teleports from both of these solo laners and, and the rotations out from Lazbra that we've seen. There's just been so much going on. And both teams apparently on top of it. But the Jade Dragons, the ones who are benefiting the most, over a 3,000 gold lead despite both of the objectives. Or, or rather, excuse me, the, the Gold Fury goes to the Jade Dragons. That's a big difference maker here. But the Pyromancer goes to the Bolts. The kill's still feeling comfortable for the Dragons. But it's Barracuda who's fallen a little bit behind. If you look across the map, it's a two-level lead for Awesome Jake. One-level deficit for Barracuda. Hasn't gone back to base in a little while. And so he'll be able to get a pretty decent item power spike in a minute when he heads on back. Polar Bear Mike's going to rotate behind Barracuda here. Barra. Oh, boy. <laughs> gets the silence out. Beads get used. Wait for the time. There it is. Centaurus. No chance. But now Haddox is teleported to the left side of the map, and we will fight again. I've seen more 5v5 team fights in the first 18 minutes of this game than I've seen in any other game this year. Haddox pulls one back. Cage. That evens up the scoring. Both ADCs are gone. Fine. OK, jumps onto Venenu in the back. But Ven has the range to deal damage outside of that. Awesome Jake taken down by Pagon as the Thoth gives the Jade Dragons a one kill advantage in this fight. That's a great way to use the Odin Cage. Not even, oh, oh here comes God. a beautiful blink ton of Venenu already had to use the beads here. Final K is getting aggressive. Yeah, you thought you could analyze anything, Trelly. Not when these two teams are on the map. Ven has to use the ult backs away. Pagon tanking up the tower just a little bit. What is Lazra trying to do here? He's on his own, gets taunted through by Sam for Soccer, nearly turns the kill, but Pagon instead has the damage. Ven gets stunned, he'll get bird bombed with the Aegis well-timed and needed. And Venenu <laughs> remains on the map, I'm about to cry. Final K jumps forward and it should be a tier two tower plus a few kills for the Dragons. Well, Final K's cage is already back up, so it's hard to analyze the last one he had, but let me, let me, <laughs> let me give it a shot. It's a great way to use the cage, not only to trap people inside and shut off their healing, that sort of thing, but just to zone them off. Awesome Jake was cut off essentially a Ymir wall, just you cannot escape, you can't go through the cage because your teammates can't break you out. He gets picked off. And then we just saw the smorgasbord of fighting that we that, that led after the fact. There's yep. just a great initial cage as well as some great damage. Laspra, look at the way he's itemized. Hasn't went for that Berserkers and Shogun's build. We saw he wasn't that tanky diving there. He has the Soul Eater. He's going for a little bit of sustain. And obviously, he did get the Ansile. So trying to get some of that magical defense. It helps out a lot well, he needs it. with the Athena Taunt because the old Athena Taunt didn't do damage. So it wouldn't proc the Ansile. This one. Will, as Panda Cat, just disrespectful, steals the blue buff right in front of Haddix. Yeah, why not when Panda's been playing the way he has in the last couple of games? Not massive up on the damage charts, and even negative in the KDA department. The Sanford Soccer is relentless. That is a dash forward, and he's got Polynomicon, by the way, so if you see a big burst of damage after a taunt from Sam, you know where it comes from. Circle of protection right inside the cage. Cataclysm from Jake on the back line, but the Geb has been left alone. Final K jumping through, desperately trying to pull back and kill, but look how low the dragons are. That was then it's Haddix who is damage. running down the back line. But Final K will even up the score. A knock up onto Polar Bear Mike. And the Olympus Bolts not happy with the way that this game has gone. Run down the dual lane of the dragons. 
and add a couple of kills, whereas it's only Jake who falls on the bolts. The Jade Dragons cannot group up when Barracuda has Centaurus, even this far behind with the Titan's Bane. He's doing crazy amounts of damage, and Sam Brzaka oh. is still finding huge taunts. Sam's still going for it, still looking for it. It's a knockup from Ven, sets up a disengage for the Olympus Bolts. Sam for Soccer has Blink, so now there you go. Double Blink in on Venenu, who doesn't have his actives. And fine, okay, we'll nab the kill. Cage puts Lasbra just a bit further back, but there's still damage from the Olympus Bolts. In on to fine, okay, Pagon, full HP. That's who you gotta be careful of here. Charon's coin and Soul Reaver completed. The Olympus Bolts realizing you got an advantage over here at the moment. Looks like Primal Fury will be the reward. Primal Fury is going to be pretty massive for them. I mean, the gold lead is all that is really separating them right now. Obviously, the XP is pretty prevalent at the moment, 7,000. But if they could get these items just a little bit closer, I mean, that team fight was all but won by the Bolts, I would say. It was just the, the rotation back in from the J Dragons after the respawns and things like that. So a, a very solid team fight. And I think it all stemmed from, again, the fact that the J Dragons grouped up in that little corridor right in the jungle. There's a lot of AOE damage, but the J Dragons, they don't want to fight anymore. They want to go for this Fire Giant. Fire Giant being whittled on down by the Jade Dragons. Awesome Jake. Close by, has a Cataclysm, but there's Final Judgment and Circle Protection, the second of which gets used. Petrify onto Jake. The Jade Dragons, of course, confirm the FG. Awesome Jake is low, but Barracuda is full HP. His Panda Cat finishes off the Geb. Lasbra chased down by Sam for Soccer, and the Bolts lose the FG, and the Jade Dragons add two kills as well. Oh, no, Barra. As if the Dragons weren't far enough ahead, there's going to be a massive spooling of gold Massive map state change over the next couple of minutes. They are not going to let Barracuda get out easily here. He's going to have uh, to have no. some juke shoes. Haddix does have to send the Madness available now, so we'll be able to get out pretty freely here. What? There's the ultimate. Oh, I thought that was on the Haddix for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I, was, I was so confused how he died that fast. Centaurus from Barracuda uh, wears on out. Haddix actually trades back a kill on the Sam for Soccer as Veneni rotates out of base with a good item set in his back pocket. As a double root from Pagon rotates through, forces the Aegis out of Ben. Oh. This is nuts. We've officially reached nuts. The Jade Dragon still retain Fire Giant on four. Tier 2 Tower will be knocked down. We have 30 kills. Yeah, I can do that math quickly. Don't worry. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you if a, a squid or an octopus uses ink, <laughs> but I can tell you that 13 plus 17 is 30. I can at least do that much. Not bad. As the Jade Dragons knock down a tier two on right and a Pyromancer, and now time to go back and spend up some of that gold. Yeah, you only have one more tier two tower available in the middle right now. I think the Olympus Bolts, they're losing their fighting potential at the moment, Dave. It's just too much damage on the board. The Jade Dragons have been playing extremely well with their characters. I mean, I, I, I have to continuously shout out Sam for Soccer. He's been setting up so much. As a jungler, you usually are this play call. You're this, you're this huge damage role, but Sam has been setting up as well as doing that damage. Now the Bumbers, the Bumba's hammer is completed, so he's going to have so much damage. Jake <laughs> is not going to be able to get out. He might get double taunted here. Yeah, he's going to. Panda Cat will snag that one. Sam for Soccer has been an absolute setup machine here this game. And you know what? I will stand absolutely corrected. I was unsure on how effective Athena ult was going to be at setting up for Sam. It has been, like, absurd. And you know what? I should have learned because the, the, the pros played this against us during our charity tournament this year. They had an Athena on their team, and all they did was just Horus rotate into Athena ult all over the map, and one by one by one they killed us off, and that's... Exactly what I'm feeling right now for the Olympus Bolt. Centaurus gets used early by Barracuda. Oh, oh my god! Pagon detonates Barracuda's HP bar. As a left side, Phoenix is going to get sieged here. The J Dragons have set up a game ending moment. Ven dashed in. Won't be taunted by Sam for soccer, so Ven will at least remain on the map. Sam, though, uses his ult. Allows some prots to find their way onto Panda Cat. Awesome Jake taunted through. Goodbye. Panda Cat on a killing spree. The Olympus Bolt's down to three members. And the Jade Dragon's onslaught looks near over. They have one more giant defense tool left. The Send into Madness still available. Haddix has this giant Cthulhu ultimate, and he's going to have to CC the heck out of that. I need the Dragon to end this game so I can get a break, because this has been chaos in game number two. The Jade Dragons are taking a lot of damage, though. That has got the defense, and it looks like we may go on. Haddix into Send into Madness to shut down one. Pagon, though, hits another final judgment. Lazarus is still alive, but I stand corrected as the final petrify of maybe the game isn't on the hat. Barracuda back. is back onto the map. Final K still tanking up the Titan. And the Olympus bolts as three stand underneath their Titan. 
and extend this game out. I mean, all things considered, that could have been a lot worse. They only lost one Phoenix in that. I mean, the, the, the J Dragons have such a lead right now. Opting to go for the end instead of the other Phoenixes is going to go back to bite them at this point. They don't really have much to stand for that push except for that left Phoenix. Of course, the massive gold lead th they're going to love. The fire minions pouring in the best Phoenix. That left side bird is also solid, but I think they'd much rather have three Phoenixes down and no sort of HP on the Titan than one and still a tier two tower standing. So I think they could have pushed that fire giant just a little bit better, but at this point, probably grasping at straws. You have a 6 and 0 Odin, who's had incredible cages all game against Sam for soccer. These taunts have been up point, and, and Pagon has deleted two people in the last like two minutes with final judgment. Yeah, the final, <laughs> the, uh, the, the Deso plus now what is the alternate timeline for Pagon? The CDR is my point, has, uh, has bought a couple extra final judgments in these fights. It's a conditional CDR plus Chronos pendant. And my goodness, Pagon is going to be difficult to kill. <laughs> if you can somehow get to Pagon once, great. You're going to have to do it a second time after he respawns. And the Olympus Bolts have had a hard enough time getting onto that Thoth. Feels like the J Dragons have been driving so much, if not all, of the aggression here. Awesome Jake uh, is going to uh, be able to purchase a Sentinel Spoon, so at least he gets his starter item upgrade. Feeling maybe a bit far behind as far as items go. But the J Dragons have shown up big here. Olympus Bolts keep things interesting, though, Charlie. We, we have seen games turned around from far greater deficits. All it takes is one Fire Giant fight to go wrong, playing around the wave on the left well enough. The Olympus Bolts are strong here at this point. We can keep things interesting. And at least you have Haddix with the global presence of Teleport. He could clear that wave out and still make it in to defend this Fire Giant if need be. Right now, the wave's not pushed up too much, so it looks like none of the bolts are going to back in. I, don't, I wouldn't expect to see the J-Dragon step up here at all until that wave starts to yeah, push. Why would you? Final K is in no sort of danger. He, I mean, at this point, he is super tanky. There is a world where I think he can get shredded down, but it's after Barracuda finishes that item he's working on, Heartseeker. That's going to help out a ton right now. At the moment, they have no real ADC shred. It's pretty much just Ven's damage as well as Lasper trying to get that starter upgraded. So it's going to be pretty difficult for them to kill Final K, and that's why he's able to frontline so effectively right now. The shield yeah. even is hard for them to kill. Uh, you do see, I mean, Panda Cat's pretty far, far ahead, rather, as itemization goes. We have seen this a lot. Awesome Jake using the stone shield on himself. As Haddix does go over to the left side of the map. So fire minions will be dealt with by the Cthulhu. Then, despite being four and five, top player damage in this game. So Morgan Le Fay from range has found the damage necessary. Haddix doesn't full clear the fire wave and teleports in, and the J Dragon is so bait. smart. It is back away. Fire Giant gets started. Fire wave not fully, fully pushed out. That was beautiful. And the J Dragons pull off of the objective. Now you have to look at that left side Phoenix. It'll respawn here in the next 20 seconds or so. And so you want to keep that alive if you're the Olympus Bolts. You got maybe two, three more fire waves to deal with. Lasper is going to head back to base now. Deal with this one as the left side Phoenix does end up respawning, but the J-Dragons now have a, a hard confirmed 4v5 advantage with no teleport for Vaz. Yeah, just a smart play to make sure to hit the, fi the, the Fire Giant just a little bit to bait out that teleport, then just back off. It's a 5v4, as you mentioned, and the Fire Giant's getting very fire low. Fire Giant's low, maybe Barra with Centaur, something like that. No, no chance. Final judgment out from Pagon, but poor Bear Mike is low. Ven with the range damage as well, has gotten PBM so low on the back line. But he will get out for the time being. Haddock's being melted through. Odibo massive now for Panda Cat. His awesome Jake walks for Double knockup. Centaurus out from Barracuda. Does not get the kill on the Polar Bear Mike. Awesome Jake will not roll away. Pagon's on a rampage. And the J Dragons get the FG. They get three kills. Panda Cat's got a double. Bye bye, game two. The J Dragons will take it. And Haddix does not have the ultimate this time. Maybe last time you're able to fend with the Senate of Madness. This time around, you might have to sell your whole build for damage at this point. I do not think Cthulhu against five J Dragons with Fire Giant. It's not going to work. And we we now know the answer. The Bull Shark will eat the, <laughs> eat the, eat the, eat eat the squid. The squid, that's right. Yeah. Hey, I did find out, though, both octopuses. And squids, uh, octopi, I guess. Both use ink as a defense mechanism, and Haddix needs a little bit now. If he wants <laughs> any sort of chance under this Titan, uh, he'll head back into the fountain. And the J Dragons, with a unique draft, are able to put down the Olympus Bolts, and they'll take this set 2-0. It's a beautiful comp that they put together, I think. I was amazed at how unkillable Final K was. We haven't seen too much of Odin recently, and 
for, for not good reason. I was going to say for good reason, for not good reason. That looked really solid out of Final K. Again, San Soccer setting up so much on this. Athena, the taunts were always there. The cooldown resets with Bumbas is certainly going to help. And Pagon really came online. I mean, we talked about Panda Cat so much game one. This time we could talk about Pagon Snipes as well. We saw Vazbra, you know, at least able to pull something back early on in this game, but never really got the ball rolling out of the jungle with the J Dragons. I'd like to think, again, I think they learned something from the casters versus pros matchup <laughs> during that charity event where, where they used this style of composition against us. I take that as practice. Okay. So J Dragons, you're welcome for the 2-0 win. J Dragons take the set 2-0 over the Olympus Bolts. Lots to break down in this one and the desk will do so right after this break. Cheer you up. I'm never on your good days. I wasn't worth that much. You told me I was special, but not enough to make you stay. I guess you couldn't settle for somebody like me. My self esteem has reached a new all time low.
of two O's all the way up until this point, and it will not change here for the Jade Dragons, at least. They take down the Olympus Bolts in two this time around here for our second set of the day. And, and another close battle, just like we saw in game number one, Gore, but when it came down to so many of these team fights here, we saw a lot of similarities to game number one, where the Dragons are able to outpace or really able to keep the bolts kind of spread out in these fights but the early game a lot more decisive here for the dragons I mean sam was getting yeah. very active very early on both sides of the map i mean he had a gank and solo right at the start and then immediately went to the other side of the map and got a gank and duo lane for another kill. Yeah, and I w again, very impressed with the fact that this Athena was able to be as all over the place as I was. Like, you typically you go into this and you start looking at specifically Guardian scaling. You look at uh, at least what I expected to see. Uh, and it was not going to be kills maybe being scooped up as much in the jungle, as much as it was going to be set up. And yet he still just did both, as it turns out. I think, uh, you know, between this pick being able to, to come in, this one feels like a very heavy, to, like, cherry influence to me. I, I think like Sam probably has an Athena in the wheelhouse without Cherry as a coach, but I think that that's like, that, that was his bread and butter, right? And so all of a sudden I think that, that comes into fruition here and it just looks good. This plus the Odin, uh, I think really did kind of rock the worlds of the bolts here. I think it was a lot of control. Uh, you know, when there wasn't a phantom shell, some, hell, sometimes even when there was a phantom shell available, the Odin cage was just finding a lot in terms of, of what it was able to do, whether it was separation or locking them in and, and things like that, where it was just very difficult. If you escape that, cool. Can you escape the taunt? Can you get away? Uh, the answer most of the time was just no. And then all you need, like, Pagon and Panda Cat, I don't want to say had, like, a, an easy time, but it did feel like this was a, their job in this game was, all right, just just deal the damage. Like, we don't need too much from you. Just come up, make sure you're following up. And when it came down to, to what Fine OK and Sam were setting up for them, it made it very, uh, I want to say, like, easy to be a carry. Your life becomes a little easier because all of a sudden, hey, this guy got taunted. Cool, I'm Thoth. I'm just going to shoot at him. I'm Medusa. I'm just going to throw everything there. And I think that these two really helped uh, kind of shepherd this win in for the uh, for the Dragons. Yeah, I mean, 7-0 and zero for Fine, 7-5 for Sam, 5-1 over here for Pagon, then 7-4 for Panacab. Mike, not able to find a kill here, a few deaths yeah, in his name out but there. 15 but 15 assists. 15 assists. Pretty good on the East set support. I mean, this is something we talk about in here where, you know, game number one felt like a very meta style of draft by both the teams out there. They were just playing what's good at the time. This game here really did just feel like a Dragons composition. Yep. This felt like they were playing their game, these kind of somewhat weirder picks out there, at least for PVM on the East set. You know, Final K going back to his own Sam Refusing to continue to play what is the, the <laughs> current meta of the junglers out there. It, it felt like this was Ooh, very at wow. home for them, and they were able to get a lot a, a lot of good performance out here. I um I was going to throw the Bolts duo lane like out there because like their combined KDA is like one in fourteen or something in just KD. But also the damage gap between like Panda and Barra and the damage gap I, I think that I saw in the jungle there as well between Lazbar and Sam was just massive for what the dragons were able to output and and that like in and of itself maybe speaks of it. Like they essentially did enough damage between the two of them to have another person and then some on their team in terms of damage gap between them and the bolts. Yeah, as a Bit of a duo diff in that one here, but we'll talk to the solo laner for the Jade Dragons here. We got Final K standing by for our pregame interview. Congrats on the 2-0 win for yourself out here. Uh, how are you feeling about the team so far? You know, you've had a couple of, a few weeks of play now to kind of mesh with the team. How do you think you guys are kind of living up to your expectations so far? Um, you know, with Dano in the mid lane now, he's just a, a very different player than a lot of different mid laners or just players in general in the league. And uh, it's taken some time for us to, like, adjust to that. But I think we're starting to figure out, like, how we want to practice and how we want to, like, draft. And uh, I think it's, you know, coming together. Yeah, and speaking of drafts, you know, we were kind of joking about, you know, maybe the Cherio influence in that last little game there. Was Cherry just kind of whispering in your ears, guys, 
Athena, Athena jungle. I swear it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of it's funny. I think Sam's played a little bit of Kabrakin, you know, you know, some maybe not Naja yet, but soon the Naja <laughs> will come out. Um, you know, maybe maybe back to the early and get a pentakill. But yeah, I mean Cherry definitely has had like a decent influence on us already. And I, I mean for good reason. Cherry's like one of the smartest players to ever play Smite. So um, you know, we're definitely taking everything he says in stride and uh, you know, working with it. Yeah, I mean, if you can't if you can't have Cherry in the jungle, you might as well have someone to play through it's through yeah, Cherry of, exactly. vicariously here. But uh, you're, you're you know you've got to match up against the Leviathans. You know they were the top team last time around. They've had a couple of shortcomings so far th this phase here. You have any expectations going up into that set against them? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we haven't really thought about. It. We're taking everything like you know week by week. I don't think we thought too much about them. That's going to be our only set next week, which is a bit of a different pace because we play two sets every mm -hmm. other week. But um, yeah, we're definitely gonna try and prepare for them the best we can. Try and beat them. Go into uh, the playoffs feeling good and with a uh, I think it'll be five and two record. So they have looked a little bit uh wishy washy lately. <laughs> um, but you know they're, they're the world champions for a reason, so I can't really underestimate them. Yeah. Well, congrats on your win today. I'll let you back to celebrate. Thanks for stopping by for the interview. Thank you. That's something, you know, we hear that with a lot of players out here going up against, you know, the next opponent. You know, what do you think about, you know, the next one out there? Well, yeah. we just take it the one game at a time. And you can definitely tell that here with the Dragons and really any team that that, that goes into their matchups individually. You know, you know, bolts into the Dragons this matchup. We, we were talking about you know, how much homework is done against the Dragons. The bolts were able to answer a couple of questions, but maybe not all of them here. Though, let's take a look at the schedule, though, just to see what you may have missed so far this week. Because we've only got one set left. And that's going to be the Oni Warriors up against the Camelot Kings. That'll end out our weekend. But it's been nothing but 2-0 yeah. so far. All, all of our games on Friday, all of yesterday, and so far all of today have been nothing but sweeps for all of these teams. Well, I can tie this in, at least with the interview a little bit. Only having the Leviathans next week, I think, is good for the Dragons, right? You get to just watch, look and focus on one team, right? Their picks and bans, their style of play, things like that. That's the only Warriors this week. They didn't have to play anybody else. They're only coming in for the Kings. So it's been a lot of time, like, they get to watch what the, the Titans did yesterday and see, okay, what, do, what are the Kings doing right? What are the Kings doing wrong? Where can we maybe capitalize on that? And you get to put all of your focus on just that individual team. And things like that matter especially when you're looking at where they're at right now, technically fifth and sixth in the standings. Top four of this are going to go into a seeding, which is going to help for like Masters a little bit later when they play each other, but it's also going to affect seeding there in phase two. So being in the top four, getting a win here if you're the Kings, or being able to stop them from getting a win and getting one if you're the Warriors gets you closer to that point, maybe helps you out because then you get pushed back much further as to when you have to show up and play in the Masters, which is going to give you a lot less of a... Like, hills you have to climb, right? Because there's 16 teams or something Oof, that lot. are going to be there. And so ideally, you are not having to, to beat every other SVL team at any given time. The higher you place, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to kind of relax for a little bit. You'll miss out on the first week entirely, which is probably going to be a good deal for you. And then the second week get to come in. So fighting right here. And I think this next set, especially after we, we just watched this one, this one just as important for the same reason. You're starting to look for this fight for the top four being, I think, very, very close. Yeah, heavily implications moving in to week number four and then towards the seeding and Masters tournaments that will follow up after that. But we got one more set today that's going to be the Warriors and the Camelot Kings. That one's going to be coming up right after this break.